Good evening, party people, and welcome back to the bar with an X. My name is Cameron, and I'll be your bartender this evening. Evidently, it is now summer. Uh, I believe, I don't know when the summer solstice actually happened, but indeed, the heat is upon us. It is upon me, it is upon many, at least on this side of the universe, or this side of the globe, I mean, hemisphere-wise. I think it's very cold over on the other side. But it seems that one of the hot things that's on people's minds, aside from the sun above, is what the hottest cocktail is of the summer. It's a, it's a tabloid. It's pe People search it, they're like, what should I be drinking? drinking this summer because we're constantly trying to find references in the folks around us, especially the people who we kind of trust because of their media presence and stuff. It's a big thing that we don't really need to get into like all of the, the weirdness of, but alas to say, no worries. I got you. I went through a lot of those different tabloids this morning as I was doing a little bit of searching to find like, well, what is the hottest summer beverage? Is everybody agreed upon it? <laughs> no. Evidently, they are not. Uh, evidently, there's at least a few different ones out there. There are lists that say, like, here's the top 25 cocktails that you want to be drinking this summer. And that's just too much work. Like, one of them at least is like 35. One of them was like, here's the 100 cocktails that you can drink in the summer. Like, dude, can I just get something simple? Some are simple, some are not. Some are sprintsy, some are hot. Uh, actually, I didn't find any that were specifically hot. Although, there was one that utilized Ancha Reyes chili liqueur, which in a way is hot, but it's hot like spicy, not like temperature. But I guess we are starting off with something hot now that I think about it. So apparently there's things all over the place in terms of what is like the hot cocktail of the summer. Evidently it changes based on the year depending on social trends, media folks, and I guess prevalent figures in the bartending or mixology world. I think last year the drink of maybe it was the summer was that whole like Negroni Spagliato thing going around where you put the mistake in the Negroni, which is the Prosecco in this case. It's really not that bad, although I've never actually tried one. But Prosecco is eh. And Negronis are awesome, so like, combined together, like, I would imagine it's like, at least okay. Um, that is not the topic for this year. That was so 2022! We're in 2023! The summer of 2023, as of this video's recording, evidently. And so that's the idea. We're gonna try to say, we're gonna go, I've found a couple of different uh, magazines or social outlets, people who are influencers in the field, and evidently, and their top recommendations for the summer of 2023 and what cocktail that you should be drinking. And we're gonna make five of them today. And um, I am merely going to just give my take. I am absolutely not a figure worth listening to in this field. However, I'm just an individual just like you are, uh, who happens to have a bar in his apartment in Philadelphia. And, uh, and I love this thing. Um, not a level up than anybody else out there, just, just a level aside from all that stuff. In any case, let's get ourselves started over here. Evidently, when I think of something that is like a summer cocktail, something that is easy, I think of something that is easy, something that is easy to drink, whether that be it's refreshing because of the heat outside, it's just enjoyable nonetheless. And one of the things that pops up are, again, that concept of a simple drink. As some of the kind of um, recipes that I've seen out there for like really, really fun drinks for the summer can be a little bit complicated, but I think the simple ones tend to follow a certain set of just simple rules. And that is, you're gonna find simple ingredients, you're gonna put them together, usually a simple way. Sometimes people go crazy with this stuff, and it's awesome to see people kind of take their take on things. But I feel like in terms to get to the masses, again, totally not an authority on this, you need something that's accessible to people. For example, I think the hot, like the de facto summer drink, I think, is spritzes in general, like an Aperol spritz, which is very simply, it's got it's Aperol and like other stuff. I have a recipe here, we'll talk about that later. Um, but we'll start with something completely different, actually. Um, last week, we started with, uh, it was a chocolate stream, and we started off with an espresso drink to start things off with. And I'm doing the same thing again. This first cocktail is quite literally an espresso tonic. And I made some espresso before the stream actually started so we didn't have to sit around and watch this thing like bake and stuff. Because um, uh, that Mr. McCoffee machine is uh, not very entertaining to watch. Espresso with one S? That's the, in the beginning at least. Espresso. Espresso. Tonic. It's just espresso tonic. It's not even espresso and tonic. That's all it is by the way. It's quite literally just espresso in time. There's nothing more complicated about them. That's pretty much all it is. Evidently, espresso tonic is the de facto cocktail of the summer, according to Food and Wine, that big magazine out there. I was able to find that link through ABC News, apparently. ABC News was like, what are you drinking this summer? What's the thing you're gonna drink? And uh, it's actually not alcoholic at all, because uh, everyone's very much into the whole non-alcoholic movement, and I totally get that. This one is quite literally just espresso and tonic water. We're gonna start things off very, very simple around here. Also, I just completely noticed our pineapple this stream is completely blocking what our current re recipe is. It's okay, the important part is there's espresso in there. Caffeine and stuff. We're gonna start things off in a very fun way, it seems. So uh, I actually made this espresso beforehand. If you're really curious of how I pull my espresso, it's a cheap 
espresso machine, Mr. Coffee, that I got from a garage sale back around my hometown. And um, as I was watching it today, making the coffee, oh, it's, it's hot in this container. I'm just gonna pour it back in my little pour thing over here. Um, it's, a, it's, 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 I guess, espresso. There's no cool, satisfying, like, crema up on top or anything like that. It's a, for, as far as espresso goes, it's very Nespresso. Like, Nespresso. It's very, it's kind of disappointing as it pertains to that. But alas, we have espresso nonetheless, and we're quite literally just gonna put it over, put it over some uh, tonic water. That's, it's, it's quite simple. Let me grab myself a glass over here. I'll adjust the cocktail angle so we can all watch this beauty as it unfolds. Um, as, as much as coffee can be beautiful. Coffee can be very beautiful, might I say. I love coffee. Coffee wakes me up. Caffeine is good. We all like that. And um, that's that's what I'm going to share, at least with you all today. Let me see what kind of glass we're getting. Looking at kind of like an old-fashioned glass here. It's not really that much. According to the recipe that I have here, you put a single shot of espresso. And I don't exactly know what the measurements are on a single shot of espresso. And you just kind of pour tonic water. I believe it's on top of it. There was a specific instruction here about how you were supposed to put it together. I think it is tonic water, sparkling water. I don't remember which order you're supposed to put it. I think it's the espresso. It's the espresso on top of the tonic because if you put the tonic on top of the espresso, there's this weird stuff that happens with all the foam and stuff. And my espresso evidently does not have any crema on it because the Mr. Coffee machine is less than 20 bucks, I think, MSRP. So what do you expect from it? Um, you could probably do this ice. You could do it otherwise. There's really, I guess there's really no rules to this except exactly what you want. I'm gonna grab myself one of my glass cups over here, one of my toddy glasses. It's glass and it's nice. And when, uh, we'll, take a, we'll take a check of this. Pop the angle down here. Everybody can see what's going on. It's shocking, I understand. We have a cocktail within the first, what, five? Oh, within the first ten minutes of the stream? We'll be drinking already! I guess, it's, again, it's not really a cocktail. It's a, it's a mocktail, um, at, at the very least. It's a non-alcoholic drink. It's a spread. It, it's coffee and tonic water. That's really all it is. Uh, I'm gonna grab myself some ice, because I actually feel like I like my coffee ice, but again, as I was saying before, it's... You know, depending on the way that you do summer, maybe you like a hot drink. You could definitely do this without ice. There's nothing forcing you to put ice in this. As it pertains to the recommendations from uh, ABC News and Food and Wine, um, all of their pictures say put it over ice. But, you know, you do you. It's your summer vacay or just your summer in general. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to grab all my tonic waters. Uh, that's not the right tonic water. No, it is the right tonic water. It's my premium Indian tonic water. Thank you, India. We appreciate that. Uh, the other, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I was making like a gin and tonic out here, and I, I've been using like really, really cheap ass tonic water, and I realized that it doesn't really make my gin and tonics taste very good, so I decided to level up. I don't know if this is a twist off or not. I'm gonna give it a try. No, it most certainly isn't. That's okay. That's what we have openers over here, and I wish I had one more accessible. Just kidding. Right here. Let's give that a crack. Tonic water. I'll throw that in the bucket. I'll take care of it later. Step one, for your espresso tonic, you are quite literally going to take your tonic water and you're going to pour it in. You could be following measurements here, but I guess it really depends on, you know, what your preferences and stuff are. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour espresso on top of it. It's that easy. I say attempting to pour this with my left hand. I am right-handed and this is not gonna end very well. But simply it's like that. Now, if you were pulling a more fresh espresso shot, this would probably be a little bit different. However, I like the way that this thing layers. It's working very well. I'm gonna take the rest of my espresso and I'm just gonna put it back in my container over here. I will be drinking that in the morning. Tomorrow morning. It'll give me a moment. There we go. We always try to clean up as we go around here. Nick Hamilton once said, because we're like, respectful in this house, um, I clean up because I've realized that when I don't clean up, it's just more work for me later. And I'm about saving energy. Put that over there. This is our espresso tonic. That's that's all it is. And honestly, this could probably just use the rest of this little tonic bottle that I have here. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for it. There's an interesting little clouding effect happening there. I wonder if I can just get it down the side if I can kind of avoid things mixing on itself. Because really, if I'm gonna drink this, I want it to be all combined together, right? Yeah, just go for it. There we go. Oh yeah. It's gotta be all combined together. Why would I want anything <laughs> just floating up on top? Unless you want the experience of actually drinking the coffee first, the espresso first, and then you have the tonic afterwards. And you know what you can do with this? You can garnish it literally any way that you want to. If you wanted to do like a little, I'll do a little orange twist over here just to pop things in there. Um, let me get my thing out of here. Lyric's popping in here saying that turns out espresso plus tonic equals beer. Woo! We'll see. It does look very beer-like from here. 
I don't know how it spells yet, but I'm gonna put a little, this says over here, you could garnish this with a lemon peel, you could garnish it with an orange peel, you could garnish it with rosemary, it says specifically, I dropped the orange peel in there. There we go, and it's kinda, it's kinda floating up at the top. I don't know if you can, definitely can't see it from your angle right now, but there it is. They're poking right there. There's our guy. I'm gonna give my orange back to little fruits basket over there and take a quick old pick of this as we kind of walk our way through it. It is very beer looking. Larrick saying love coffee and lemon specifically can certainly see orange as well. I like, I associate the flavor of coffee with the flavor of chocolate. So when I think of things that go, citruses that go well with coffee, I immediately think orange, but it's, I, I couldn't completely understand the lemon there. Mostly because I tend to avoid lemon super duper sour for me. But, and also, hello, absolutely. By the way, everybody, Larrick is out there also makes cocktails here on Twitch. And as he was, she shared with me, it was a, I think it was a barley, it wasn't the barley syrup, I think it was the barley tea uh, recipe, I think it was. And that's over on our Discord. It's, a, it's I don't have any barley on me, and I don't know if that's very summery. That feels very fall-like to me. Uh, at some point in time, I will definitely have an entire exploration on that. So I appreciate you sharing your vast wealth of knowledge. So this is our espresso and tonic. Or just, it's just espresso tonic. That's literally all it is. It's not end tonic, although it really is just espresso and tonic. And as far, insofar as this is espresso, came from a machine that called itself an espresso machine. Does it really produce espresso? It really depends on what you mean by espresso. But it's coffee, and it's got caffeine, and we mixed it with sparkling stuff. So that's just how it is. There is no alcohol in this, but being that this is an espresso and tonic, if you wanted to boost this up a bit, you can just add some gin to it. And because this is a cocktail show, I will be adding some gin to it. But first, we're going to taste it how it seems right now. Espresso tonic. It smells very orangey because I literally just expressed an orange peel over top of it. So if you were using lemon, it might smell kind of lemony. If you put some rosemary on it, it might smell like mint. Oddly enough, if you put mint on it, it also smells like mint. Rosemary doesn't exist for the purposes of this conversation. Ooh, wow, I love that. Oh, that's so cool. Ooh, I gotta give this a mix. Let me give this a mix. I love the bitterness. Ooh, I really like that. It is, so I, I like drinking my coffee black and the, pe the one of the pieces that I love of that is that I really like the bitter components there. And oftentimes you might find me drinking Americanas, which is essentially just adding hot water to your espressos and stuff. So this diluted espresso is not new to me. It's very pleasurable to me. And honestly, I think the orange was so perfect there because I can actually taste all the orange oils that are that are kind of laying up on top of the drink. The tonic water is just ever so, it provides just enough sweetness because it is sweetened. I wonder um, actually how much, how much sugar we got in this bottle. What's the sugar content on this thing here? It says it on the bottle. Evertree, refreshing the light, premium Indian tonic water, contains at minimum 7.6 carbs. No sodium, no fat, total 5.8 grams of sugars, 5.8 of them being added, 12% daily value. Daily, daily volume or something? Evidently I've got at least, what, a... 12 out of 100 is 6 out of 50 is 3 out of 25. 3 25ths of my, my sugar today. This is so pleasant. I can understand. Oh yeah, that's so good. Wow, this almost, actually, now that I think about it, lemon would go perfectly here because there is a certain bitterness. It's gotta be, that's actually gotta be from the tonic water. This tastes like something that's, it tastes like lemon water if the water itself had like lemon slices in it in the sense that not only is the fruit infusing into the water but also the peel and the pith on the inside it's got just that level of bitterness to it not only from the coffee but also from the tonic water it's almost like this is lemonade it's like lemon water plus espresso it's like a lemon lemon americano almost but it's cool and it's definitely got a bit more sweetness it's not super duper on the bitter side it's really really pleasant that's really good I thought maybe it was a bit of those orange oils expressed up on top, which is definitely contributing to that kind of citrusy nature there. But that is, I am very glad I bought new tonic water because that is, that is excellent. I probably should have tasted it on its own before actually mixing everything together. Larix is saying that I love the bitterness in real tonic water. Otherwise, it's just too sweet. Exactly. Like, I, I guess as I got older, I suppose, I mean, I liked bitterness when I was a child too. I was the kid out there in the playground eating grass and dirt and stuff. No idea what was wrong with that guy. Uh, he grew up and started drinking cocktails instead. Still, no idea what's wrong with that guy. Maybe nothing at all. Um, but the bitterness of coffee, the bitterness of just a lot of things. That's why I kind of like bitter beers, like IPAs and stuff. That's what draws me to it. It's that bitter flavor that I really didn't get used to until I became 
more or less an adult, and that's like a flavor I've latched onto. It's interesting because I think I was just reading something the other day, again, random from the internet. We don't necessarily trust everything we read on the internet, but some people, supposedly, according to the internet, don't taste bitterness. But naturally, as much as taste is subjective, I'm sure some people taste bitterness more so than others, but that one straight up said that some people don't taste bitterness. That's why some people like coffee. I do taste the bitterness, um, and I still like it, so uh, hmm, don't read everything you read on the internet, I suppose. Looking forward to the grass and dirt cocktail, Sir Slyarix. One day, I'll be taking it all the way back to my playground roots back there in New Jersey. This is so good. So far, if the whole thing here is supposed to be creating a cocktail that embodies the summer of 23, so far, these are this is my, I guess I'll provide a little rating here. This is super easy to make. You can get coffee pretty much anywhere. You can get tonic water at pretty much any grocery store, and you can get citrus anywhere. This is so easy to do. You just combine it all together. Gin, if you wanted to spike it a little bit, which I will add a little bit of gin to this to make this kind of a, a espresso gin and tonic to see how things change up a little bit. Just make it a little bit boozy over here. Just a tad bit. I think I added like maybe a half ounce in there or something like that. About 15 milliliters. And I'll give it a stir as well. I don't know where my... Oh, there you are. Hello there. I'll give you a stir at the other side. Why not? We're crazy today. All my ice is melted because it was hot espresso to begin with. Ooh, I'm liking that so far. It got nice and bubbly again. Oh yeah, I could use more gin. Mmm. So now, in addition to the bitter qualities of the tonic water that I was getting that reminded me a lot of like the pith of a, a lemon, now there's something a bit more grassy about it, a bit more vegetal. It's almost like, <laughs> I'm not, I think my mind was focused on the grass and dirt, dirt comment from earlier because I'm like, this is almost grassy in a way, but it's, a, but it's a classy kind of grassy. It's a nice kind of grassy. If you're into grass and coffee, this might be the drink for you, for your summer of 2023. As we move on to <laughs> probably move on to something else. I'll keep this with me for the duration of the stream. I like I like coffee cocktails. I'm a sucker for coffee cocktails, so this is this is just absolutely playing to my own preferences here. It's great. Larix is saying, for batched espresso tonics, I imagine you can replace hot espresso with cold brew concentrate. Absolutely. Cold brew concentrate, very oftentimes, bitter, controlled, very concentrated, as the name implies. I, uh, I remember being at my buddy's house down, hanging with him down south, and I reached into the fridge, and I grabbed some cold brew concentrate, and I poured it into a cup all the way up, and he's like, you good there, champ? I said, yeah, I'm just grabbing some coffee, because that's concentrate. You're not going to drink that whole thing. And I did not drink that entire thing in one sitting. I drank through about half of it, was wired for the day, came back, filled it up with water the way it was intended, and then was subsequently wired throughout the night. It was great. We played cards, we hung out, it was wonderful. Truly, truly the way that I wanted to spend the summer of 2021, 20, maybe? I'm not exactly sure. It was a while ago, but it was fun. So, so far, uh, and this was according, now this was the top pick according to, it was ABC News, and food and wine. Uh, the story goes something along the lines of saying that every single year, somebody's picking out a hot cocktail for summer, or cool cocktail, refreshing, whatever. Hot isn't trendy and stuff. And apparently, the espresso tonic made its way through TikTok and stuff? I'm on the TikToks, but I didn't see anything about espresso tonics so far, so I don't really know what these folks at Fine and Wine... Fine and Wine? Wine? Fine and Food? Fine! That's, that's what I did there. Uh, I don't really know what they're smoking up there. Maybe they're smoking espresso. Who really knows? We like roasted coffee beans around here. Larry says, last year was the Dirty Shirley, right? Last year was indeed the, the Dirty Shirley, and I believe it was the Negroni Spagliato, but I can't exactly remember what time of the year that was happening there. And to be honest, I did see that in the article. I think they even said there specifically, it was, yeah, the Negroni Spagliato, the Dirty Shirley, and an especially unexpected combination of espresso and orange juice that gained notoriety on TikTok. This is kind of like a next level up from that. Instead of your orange, you have your thing here. And now that I'm curious about it, how do you how does one make a dirty Shirley? Because I know nothing about it. I don't plan on making one this evening, but dirty Shirley is vodka, grenadine, lemon lime, maraschino. Oh, is that it? Oh, it's a dirty Shirley temple. That's all oh come on. And you put vodka in there. That makes totally sense. That's easy. Espresso and orange juice is also good. Gotta fluff that orange juice though. Fluff. Expand more on that. I'm not familiar with fluffing orange juice. The thing that makes me think of is you kinda maybe you froth it a little bit like you would milk to kind of Give it some air. That would be my thought. Um, yeah, so that was our espresso tonic. A very easy way to start things off. I've got caffeine in my cup, so I think we're going to be good. Not that I needed it. I was drinking tea all day. I've got enough caffeine in my system. 
but that's one way that you might be drinking your way through the summer. I love coffee drinks, so personally this one is a recommendation if you're into coffee drinks. These other ones do not include caffeine. Not not at all. So uh, we'll move on to something else. So very quick, we're going to move things to three things, hopefully rather quickly today, because there's really not that much here. There's only five cocktails to cover. That's, that's all. It's just the top five. That's all there is. We'll worry about the other stuff another time. Maybe next summer, you know? Let me erase my board up here. You really can't see it, I know, because we've got a pineapple that, as of now, remains unnamed. If anybody has a good idea for this pineapple that we will be sacrificing and scooping the brains out of, I am all ears. Actually, I'm all fronds, just like the pineapple, which is, I would say, at least half pineapple fronds, which I, I think is a good thing. It makes things very exciting around here when we have fruits, fruits that we can sacrifice for, for the good of the world. For the, for the children, you know? We sacrificed fruit for the children. Uh, and then we, we eat it, we gorge it, because we are adults and we are primal by nature. Or I guess that's just an aspect of humans or something like that. If it's not freshly juiced, says Larix, through a rotary juicer, you have to blend it for a bit. It's supposed to be aerated and slightly foamy, like a Garibaldi, orange juice and Campari. Ah, okay. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. I guess the term, you say blend, and I'm like, blend in a blender? That'll aerate things. But there's also like, there was a game I played uh, once upon a time, it's a bartending kind of visual novel game. And when they said to blend a cocktail, that just meant that you shake it really, really, really long time, which is another way to blend things. I guess the terms get a little interchanged, but either way, aerating, exactly what I had in mind. Very good. I guess that, especially for the people who are a little more like, like, a, um, what's the term? A little more sensitive to the subtle flavors and stuff. Aeration can bring, make things a bit brighter, especially for some of the juices that are like, you know, cause some orange juice, a little tart. Some orange juice, a little, a little bitter too. Uh, some oranges though, like I think the ones that I bought, those are the, those are the ones I usually get from Giant. They're very sweet. I like it very much. Valhalla is a great game. I stole the template for my emote from it. <laughs> it is great. At some point we will play it back here on the bar. I love that game so much. It inspired in me this mixological hobby based off of a recommendation from a friend of mine. So the next section that we'll get into is moving away from espresso a bit. We're moving on to something else. Evidently, it seems that the uh, there was, I'm trying to look at my sources over here. It was, yes, it is Mezcal that some people are saying are gonna make the scene this summer. Mezcal are, is essentially an agave spirit, not like tequila. Tequila uses Blue Weber agave. There's other types of agave that you can use for Mezcal. It's not just every other agave. There's a whole process to it and an intense history behind it as well. It kind of like made its way over to America and with that little like worm in the bottle of, bottom of it. And I did actually, I went to the store. Oh my God, this is great. There was only one bottle of Mezcal in my store for a while, and this was this Del Magüe Vida, and it was like $60, and I hadn't gone back for it since I ran out of it because it was a bit of a price thing. I went today, there were like five or six different mez Mezcals. One of them had a worm in it, and I was like, oh, my Del Magüe, it's back! And it was like 40 bucks, so I saved a bit there, and I was really excited to give it a try. But evidently, according to wine enthusiasts, they're saying that, that it's Mezcal that's gonna make the scene, because Mezcal nowadays, as opposed to way back yonder is more palatable, doesn't have a worm in the bottom of it anymore, only well, like, some of them do, naturally, but it's also like more prevalent. People know more about it. Previously, Mezcal kind of had this label as being like dirty tequila. And that's not the case. Sometimes it's the case, I guess, when you put a little worm in the bottom of it, and I'm talking like, it looks like, it's not like a worm, like an earthworm. Like imagine, I mean, don't imagine this if you're squeamish. I'll, I'll put my fingers in my ear if you're watching. Um, I'm about to describe the worm. It's like a larva. It's like fly larva, like caterpillar larva. It's white, it's wriggly, it's long, it's thick. It looks like it'd be juicy. And to some people that's disgusting. Me on the other hand, I'm very, very curious. Anyway, that moment is over. We move on to talking about Mezcal in general. They're essentially saying that they talked, wine enthusiast was going around to a couple of bars, one of them in particular, Fandi Manta from Brooklyn, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and they were asking all the bartenders in the area, like, what do you, th what do you think is gonna be the hot drink of the summer? What, what's gonna make an appearance out there? And at least three of them were like, it's definitely gonna be Mezcal. It's gonna be Mezcal. Mezcal's gonna be the thing that's taking, this, uh, taking the summer by storm. Um, yeah, I agree with that. So Mezcal to me, and I was thinking of like, why would this be like the thing of the summer? I just can't help but think about how Canada is literally on fire right now. And uh, there's been this consistent like air quality warning around here about not going outside because the outside's got a bunch of smoke and stuff in it. And I thought about the smoke outside and Canada on fire, specifically the summer of 23. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Mezcal's kind of smoky. <laughs> 
I guess that does kind of make sense. So uh, Mezcal is this next one here. The recipe from Fendi Manta is something called Uno Mas, and it uses specifically the Lost Explorer Espadine Mezcal. We have Nixta, I think, uh, Nixta or Nixta Liqueur de Elote, a corn liqueur. Suze, homemade grapefruit cordial, fresh citrus, and Tapa Chico. I went to the store to try to find literally anything like that. Could not find that mezcal. Found one, not that one. Couldn't find anything corn related. Couldn't even find Sue's at my local liquor store. So I'm not doing that cocktail. I also don't know what the ratios are. Instead, we're gonna do something a little bit different. It also has mezcal and it's also a kind of riff on another popular drink, not necessarily this summer, but in general called a Paloma, which does have that grapefruit, not cordial, grapefruit juice that we can all mix up here. This one is called the Paloma Negra and it is from Mr. I think it was from either Curiata or Mr. Black. It uses Mr. Black record it, I believe, so. I see Rye popping in here saying, it's white, it's wiggly, it's long, it's white. I come in at the weirdest times and I love it. Dude, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about the worm at the bottom of the mezcal. The worm at the bottom of the mezcal. Nothing else, nothing else at all. Paloma Negra. Means the black Paloma, I believe. Or uh, there might be a little more nuance there, but I'm a gringo and I know it. Negra. Spell that right? Yeah, looks like it. In any case, I didn't name this drink. You can blame somebody else. Let me take a sip of my coffee. And probably a big swig of water. It's hot out here, folks. It's supposed to be the hottest summer on record, they say. God, I love that. Make us espresso and tonic water. Actually, now that I have tonic water here and I have some extra espresso, I'm going to make one of these for myself tomorrow. I also spiked it with gin. It's great. So, the prediction for Mezcal came from Wine Enthusiast, speaking to a number of bars just kind of all around. I'm going to try to see if I can figure out exactly which ones. One was Fandi Manta from Brooklyn. One is... Uh, oh, I thought I copied and pasted the entire thing on here. Well, evidently, I did not. That's unfortunate. But it is on WineEnthusiast.com. I'm going to open that up on my set. Oh, but I can open it up over here. Let's see. I'm just gonna look it up. I don't know if this key combination works anymore. I'm gonna try this. I think it's this one? No. Is it this one? No. How about this one? I know I remapped the key combination over here to open up the... Nope. Not working at all. What about... Nope, that's not gonna work. All right. Well, evidently, I can't remember how to put my web scene, my uh, web page, up on the screen anymore. I used to be able to do that, and I remapped something, and I forgot what it was. So instead, I will just merely use what I can see on my screen over here. I'd flip this camera angle around, but I... Oh, actually, I guess we... No, what am I doing? Oh, and there goes my charger. That's not a good thing. Anyway, I know this key combination. Hello, everybody. Hi there. It's not just my chest for uh, for this. It's it's this stuff. Here's my screen. This is what we're looking at. This is... This is... Um, I think this is the one. This is the... Every year, something along the lines. I don't know if y'all can even see that. I'm trying my damn just over here. Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to look at this again real quick. And I have to go get that charger, otherwise my recipe source will will die. Fandi Manta in Brooklyn was one of them. Head bartender saying, M Milo, Milos? Milos Zika. Uh, there is Irene Miller, beverage director at Vestry in New York City, who has a cocktail called Smoke and Fire, which is a blend of mezcal, tequila, ancho reyes, and egg whites, which I guess we could have done, but I that just didn't seem very accessible from a, from a summer perspective to me. And then we also have... Cucina Alba, Alba Acanto in New York City. Beverage director Tristan Brunel is offering a Mexican-Italian mashup called the Calabrese, which uses tomato juice, which we absolutely love. I think I saw that cocktail. I love a, um, what is it? It's called a Calabrese. It reminds me of the term Caprese, uh, which I also love because uh, that's just that's just how it that's just how it be. I'm gonna reset things up over here. This is wonderful. And then I go back to my recipe keeper, and my sound should not be on. I took this thing home with me the other day. There we go. Now it is all set up. And nobody's looking at my chest. That's great. We need to get you that switcher that responds to voice commands. Dude, that's a good idea. I see uh, Colino has that. I hope he's doing well. He just went through a move. He's resetting everything up. I'm getting my charger. I mean, evidently, I'm sure there's probably like a plugin for OBS out there that connects to Alexa. So I can just tell Alexa to do things. Alexa, I'm not telling you to do things right now. Um, you still tend to screw things up. Yeah, I know you don't know that. It's okay. We all have our shortcomings. It's all right. We don't blame the machines. They're just programmed to do what the humans want them to do. And humans and machines, some humans are pretty good. Machines are stupid. They do exactly what you tell them to, even when you don't think that they are. In any case, 
So again, we're not gonna do those ones, mostly because these are like, these recipes I couldn't seem to find like actual ratios and stuff for. And when I was thinking about what I would be drinking for the summer, I'd be thinking of something that you can just like, like grab and go with. And a Paloma seemed like close to that option, but specific with Mezcal. I'm glad that I was able to get it. So starting off with some Mezcal, naturally. This whole thing is combined into a glass. You don't even have to shake this. You don't necessarily have to stir anything. You just get a tall enough glass, put some ice in it, pour everything on top of it, and bam, there you go. You've got your drink. It's simple and easy, and uh, I think that, that that embodies the summer to me, at least. <laughs> Alexa, play Huey in the news sports. Oh no, he made me say it. Alexa, no. I don't even know if it heard me anyway. Half the time it does, half the time it doesn't. I honestly don't even know. In any case, let me grab some ice for this thing and we'll start building it. This is, we need Mr. Black Cold Brew Liqueur, Madre Mezcal Espadine. I only have Del Magway Vida. Uh, I did not find Madre at, uh, at my liquor store. But then again, my mother doesn't tend to hang out at the liquor store. She's back in Jersey. And then we need grapefruit juice and soda, specifically soda water, I guess. So we, now I think the first thing that we should do is we should get our grapefruit all nice and squeezed which I find to be an absolute bother because of the tools that I have been provided by none other than myself. It, uh, it, is, a, it is just a, a life that we live over here. I got my thing. We're also gonna garnish this with a bit of the peel, so I'm gonna take the peel off first, so when I mutilate this giant-ass citrus here, it's not gonna be too much of a bother later on. I see Zechariah or Zechatwelvian, pop it in here. Welcome, you have a seat at our bar. Welcome very much. Is it summer where you are? I ask because I remember that there is two sides of this globe that we live on. And, uh, but if it happens to be summer, it will eventually, even if it's not summer, it'll be summer eventually. Don't worry, we'll get there. I grab myself a big old, le what do you call this thing? It's not a lemon. It's, um, it's pink. It's pink. It's citrusy. It's grapefruit. We love that. I'm going to give this thing a big old cut. Um, I have a big knife for the pineapple later, so I'm going to just do that. Here we go. Right down the- nope, that's slippery. Don't cut your fingers, Karen. That's a bad idea. When the knife cuts through your finger and it's done, that's- that's unfortunate. Let me, gra <laughs> Let me grapefruit this thing. Oh, that sounded like it was cracking. Anyways. I've been planning to get another one of this eventually. <laughs> it doesn't work very well. I saying, starts to sing, I need a drug by Huey Lewis in the news. Pink lemonade. Is that what pink lemonade's made out of? Actually, Anne and I were just discussing this the other day. Is it strawberry? Is it cherry? Is there something specific that goes into pink lemonade? Or are there actually pink lemons? I've seen pink pineapples, but that would be pink pineapple aid, not anything else. That would be completely different, I would say. Um, oh, I missed Larix's comment about Huey Lewis and the news. I can't even get my obscure podcast references right. <laughs> I love it. It's okay. We can't expect anybody to be at 100%. I mean, there is alcohol involved. Um, but actually, my dearest just showed me a uh, an anime the other day. I think it's called Life is Like a Cocktail, where the premise of the show is the wife who is, the I think, the main breadwinner uh, and a husband and wife couple uh, is very bad with alcohol and doesn't take care of alcohol very well, but she's incredibly pleasant when she's drunk. So every single time she comes home, the episodes are apparently three minutes long, uh, she comes home and hubby makes for her a cocktail, and it's a different cocktail every single episode, and they provide all of the ratios and stuff. So one of these days, I'm gonna do a cocktail stream. After we watch through the show, I'm gonna do a stream where we try all the recipes, because I'm, I'm an anime guy, and uh, that's exactly the kind of energy I need. Oh my goodness. Raz says, it was invented as a scam. It was barely any lemon and some blood, and some blood, blood, oh, blood orange. Blood orange? Blood orange and lots of sugar. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, this thing is clogged and it's not leaking. It's not draining. This thing is not draining. I, I despise this orange juicer, which again, it's kind of on me because I'm using this to, to juice a grapefruit. But alas, here we are. There is just so much pulp. That's kind of what you get with grapefruits. It's just, it's just how it is. It's not a, it's not a problem with the grapefruit. It's a problem with us. It's a problem with us. We take responsibility for our actions at this bar. And when, ca when camera breaks a glass, camera breaks a glass. When, um, when chat does bad, bad things, it's still Cameron who does bad, bad things. He's the one responsible. I am the head bartender in my own apartment. All right, that's, that's juicy enough for me. I don't... This grapefruit is, like, sticky, but oddly soft. Tempting. I'm gonna wash my hands a little bit. Get a little water on them. Rice says, nope, not blood orange, just... Just, 
just just blood. I'm gonna rationalize that by just saying it must have been chicken blood. <laughs> it must have been chicken blood. Please tell me it was chicken blood. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. The blood of the fallen. We are truly living in Soylent Green. My goodness gracious. <laughs> oh my god, in any case. Um, yeah, we got our grapefruit juice. It's slowly but surely just kind of like, it's kind of, it's, it's going. It's doing that. It's doing that thing that it does. I have grapefruit juice now. All right, cool. I'm going to put that off to the side. We have our garnish and everything. Everything is totally prepared. Everything is perfect. Just like the summer that Canada caught on fire. Now let's mix a cocktail. Let's go for it. We'll bring the cocktail angle over. Kind of pop it off to the side. And we'll see what we got over here. Hello, bottle of Del Magway Vita Mezcal. We love that, indeed. Uh, let's see. You are right here. Sometimes it's tough to tell exactly what this angle is because glasses are invisible to some. Maybe we have like a proper background and stuff. No, not me. Just, just, just this. All right, so we're going to fill this up with ice. I got plenty of ice cubes in here. I'm going to go for that. I got my little small guys. I actually went to the store today and bought more ice cube trays um, because uh, evidently we go through a lot of ice in this house. Um, they were having a two buy two, get one free deal. But every single container was, um, every single container had, I think, two or three tr uh, trays in it. So I now have like six different ice cube trays. And I'm like, wow. Oh, evidently, this is weird. Oh, some of my ice didn't freeze. I filled this up last night. Wild. Interesting. Bryce says, if taking medication, make sure it doesn't have any effects that interact with grapefruit. This is true. Grapefruit is one of those fruits that just seems to have a problem with natural life events, like grapefruit and pregnancy? Pregnancy. I don't know why I said pregnancy. You didn't mention pregnancy. My brain inserted pregnancy into that statement. Is that a, is that a Freudian slip? M maybe it is. I don't really know. Where is my mind at? <laughs> Not... Not pregnancy. I'm I'm too young. I'm too young to have a child. Pregnizone, maybe. Yeah, that's an antibiotic steroid thing. I'm not a doctor either, so don't take my word for it. I'm an engineer, not even a mixologist. Anyway, so to our Paloma Negra, which is only ice right now, we're going to add a single ounce of Mr. Black Cold Brew Liqueur. When I was back in Jersey. I picked up another bottle, which is great uh, because they don't sell that in my state. So I, when I go home, I pick up a couple of things. And this is a fresh bottle, so let's just all let's enjoy the sounds of bottles being opened for the first time. There we go. That actually really wasn't that satisfying. But nonetheless, we are here. And uh, when you're here, evidently your family? I don't know. Papa John's? I don't remember who does that. A full ounce or about... 30 milliliters of your coffee liqueur, your cold brew coffee liqueur, your Mr. Black liqueur, it's really whatever you want it to be. If I wasn't using this Mr. Black here and I was still out, I've got this bottle of Mr. Black Coffee Amaro, which has those awesome orangey, like bitter orange notes to it. I freaking love that stuff. Next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a single ounce. This is an equal parts cocktail aside from what we fill it up at the bottom with, which is going to be tonic water. Again, fresh bottle of mezcal. So let's open that. Oh, that one was satisfying. Here we go. Here's the pop. Woo. Oh, it smells so good. All right, a single ounce, equal parts, just like we did before. Now, of our Metzcal, the first pour of the bottle. That's worth celebrating. There we go. And next we have, yet again, if you guessed, it's another ounce of, in this case, it is going to be our grapefruit juice which hopefully will pour out of here nicely. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I hate this container, it's gonna start spilling. <gasps> the ice fell. Come on, you got it, I believe in you. I believe in you, I believe in the power of the grapefruit. Oh, okay, see, that was, that was perfect. And there's a big old seed in there. There is specifically a filter in this. It's supposed to block that, but alas, it's okay. Um, I'm just gonna be careful when I go through that with a straw. Or I can just, like, put my spoon in it. Eh, it's okay. I'm the only one drinking this here. I'll put the grapefruit juice away. Um, I don't know if we're using it again this stream. Just in case, we'll keep it off to the side. Now what we're gonna do is- oh my god. Oh, all these flies and stuff. Get out of my glass, dude. I've been- we've been experiencing a bit of fly problems around here, so I sincerely apologize for that. Even though you're not the one drinking the drink. It's been an active- it's been an ongoing situation. Again, it's getting hot this summer. So here we go. I'm gonna put my grapefruit wedge in there. I'm gonna kind of sneak it along the side of the drink. There we go. It should pop up against with the ice when we pop it with club soda. 
which I also just bought from the store today. It's apparently not the cheap stuff. And I can't... Uh, I can't get these things out. Yeah. It's in a cardboard container that just doesn't want to give. It's recyclable, though. There we go. We got it. We got it. All right, here we go. Oh, my God. Hello there. Summer in a bottle. Everything's exploding. I love that. That's what she said. Insert other weird comment here that implies suggestivity. Rye says, OMG, I'm waiting to see John Taffer barge in and start yelling at you about the fruit flies. Dude, I would love somebody to come in here and save my bar or whatever that's a reference to. Maybe that was, what was a bar rescue, right? Maybe. I'm not so sure. I don't watch a lot of TV these days. I'm a Netflixer. That yeah, was wild. They just like flew right over here. I've been right. Gosh, I have the apple cider vinegar. I got, I got a fly trap. There's, there's gotta be another angle. There's got to be another angle. Anyway, we're pouring this thing up. It's essentially a spritz. We're adding club soda in it. It's easy. It's wonderful. It's great. There's a fly in it. I hate it so much. Hello, you. Excuse me. I'm going to take that off camera for a moment as I fix things over here. This is, oh, actually that's a piece of the grapefruit. Never mind. I think we're all right, actually. <laughs> we're gonna put things back. I, I gaslit myself. Oh my gosh. All right, that's great. I'm gonna put my. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put my. I'm gonna do my. I'm, what am I gonna do with it? I'm gonna put a straw in it. I'm gonna sip it with my mouth, which is what I tend to do with cocktails anyway. Let's do. Do this one. Got a big old metal straw over here. Hopefully, I don't wind up getting the uh, the seed in there. Give that a bit of a stir. It'd be a little. Uh, it'd be a bit little unbalanced if I was sipping just. Grapefruit juice, cold brew liqueur, and mezcal. So I'll mix everything up. It's spritzy, it's bright, it's wonderful. I, I could even imagine putting a little bit of green on this, maybe like mint or something like that, but that's not what we got here. So this is what we have. This is our Paloma Negra. A Paloma, in general, is going to be, I think a Paloma is normally our, our tequila, grapefruit juice, and maybe something else. I'm gonna double check one of my other recipes over here. At least one reference to the Paloma says tequila, Cointreau, and orange liqueur, grapefruit juice, and simple syrup. That's how you would, that's one way of doing it uh, another way. But this is the, the, it's like the black Paloma. It's got Mr. Black in it. We love that stuff. It's coffee liqueur. Oh, there was another coffee appearance. That's great. Highly recommend that. Right off the nose, this thing is very, very, very strong on the mezcal. It is, I, I missed that smell so much. It is, having been like, it's been months since my last mezcal um x number of months i don't remember when there's probably a stream of it somewhere when i finish the thing off um but it's been that number of months and i'm sad about it but we're back and so what i'm getting what i was getting a lot then was smoky notes it kind of smells like something was on fire and like in like a good way now there's a little bit something more there it's almost like a now, I guess there's also a grapefruit note there. There's a citrusy characteristic. It's almost like Smith sniffing something like, almost like, not ham, but like meat that just came out of the oven that had like fresh herbs placed onto it at the end. Exactly what those herbs are, not super sure. The image that comes to my mind is one of them is like a small seed and the other one are thin blades of green. Rosemary, maybe? Who really knows? I'm not exactly sure. Rice says, say three Hail Marys and two Our Fathers. Um, I don't know about that. I'd feel weird putting my Catholicism on display for everybody. Ooh. Oh, that's so pleasantly mezcal. Ooh. This almost tastes as if you basically just added some mezcal to club soda. It's kind of like a very, very watered down, very smoothened mezcal. And I like that. But there's also this, like, there's a slight bitterness there. Only a slight bitterness. And it's most definitely coming from the Mr. Black coffee liqueur, which has a sweetness to it. It's not, like, sweet like Kahlua is in terms of other coffee liqueurs, but it's got a bitterness that is prevalent. It tastes like, not quite black coffee, not quite the super bitterness and, like, there's a word for it, pointedness of cold brew, um, but it's got a bit of sweetness to it. It's a cold brew liqueur. It's got to have some sweetness in it. That's where a lot of that is coming from. That and the grapefruit juice. The other day, I tried my first brown derby, which was like the first grapefruit juice cocktail that I really vibed with, and it smoothed things out. I was so surprised at how the grapefruit juice smoothed out, I believe it was, oh my god, what was in a brown derby? Cointreau and bourbon, I believe it was, or maybe whiskey. And I was so surprised at how smooth it was. The smoothness, I get it here. That's coming from the grapefruit juice. I didn't realize that grapefruit 
fruit juice was that smooth, at least when combined with other things. There's, it's also bubbly. You just filled the thing up with club soda, so it's a very light taste. It's very well and controlled, and it's something that you can kind of sip throughout the day, and it kind of, you get a little bit more as you continue with it. I say, about to take sip two or three. Yeah, it's like sweetened. It's it's like a sweetened mezcal, like a smooth, smooth. Like it is the way. Like when I imagine a spritz, I imagine some type of spirit, which may or may not be sweet on its own, gets watered down with club soda, and you kind of even out the sweetness. Otherwise, notably, there isn't any sort of like simple syrup and stuff mentioned in this particular recipe because there's enough sweet components coming from the grapefruit juice as well as the Mr. Black coffee liqueur, which the recipe specifically calls for. I don't have a I don't have a source on here, but it looks like it came from one of my email chains. So it was either Mr. Black themselves who suggested this, or it was Curiata. I know they tend to promote their own stuff sometimes, but it's very very pleasant. Now, so far, if this is upon the if we're on the topic of drinks for the summer of 23, where there's the Canada's on fire, what evokes the feeling a little bit more? Well, so far, I'm liking both of these so far. This very much feels like. I can sip this by a pool and hold a conversation with somebody. Actually, I'm, I'm noticing now that sweetness I was talking about sits on your tongue a bit longer. The aftertaste here is not as bitter as it was with the espresso tonic over here. Granted, I love coffee, so it's not super duper unpleasant to me. I love the taste of espresso. This is also notably more bitter, or not even, not even super bitter either. It's just not as sweet as the Paloma Negra, or let's say insert other spritzy mezcal drink of your choice as the stand-in for what this year's summer drink is going to be, which again, it was think it was, wine enthusiast was it? Anyway, they were saying it's just gonna be mezcal. It's things with mezcal, specifically mezcal. Mezcal, mezcal, mezcal. And it was indeed wine enthusiast who was saying that. Exactly what kind of drink, who knows? Take literally any other cocktail and sub out the base with mezcal. Maybe it'll do you some good this summer if you can get your hands on a bottle. It can be hard for some, but I believe, my opinion, it is worth it. Is worth it. This is good so far. I like this one. This is nice. It just it brings me back to those mezcal days that I'm very much enjoying right now. So that's another cocktail. Uh, as we move on from, let's see, that we, so far we have covered recommendations from food and wine. We've covered a recommendation from wine enthusiasts about what you should be drinking for the summer of 23. And uh, so far, uh, I like the espresso and tonic. Uh, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good recommendation. I like that. I definitely wouldn't have thought on um, like, um, like, um, authentically uh, to organically to combine espresso and tonic water together. But I guess instead of using let's say water for your Americano, you've bubblified the water and added a bitter com component to it with a slight amount of sweetness that balances out those more bitter components of the, the coffee there. So that's good. And in terms of the mezcal component, either it's because of the pre prevalence of mezcal in today's US market as compared to what it was a few years ago, or it's a bit of a side hit at the fact that Canada is on fire and people south of Canada, where I am, at least somewhere down breeze of them are, are experiencing it. So for the purpose for the purpose of this being kind of punny on its own because of the smokiness from the mezcal, I'm inclined to give that a few more points because I think that is the, it's it's terrible, but it's but it's also funny. Schadenfreude exists here. It does for me at least. At least. And uh, I'll be I'll be honest. I don't necessarily mind going outside and smelling things on fire because uh, I'm a bit of a pyromaniac and. Um, I like the way that burning things smell. I'll put that over there and continue enjoying my espresso tonic. I would say that whatever I keep next to myself is my favorite so far. I don't know. We still got more cocktails to cover, so we're going to move on to it. So, let's see. We'll move on to another one. That's what I was saying. I, again, I, I th there's more... I think I have two different mezcal and tequila cocktail books that I want to explore at some point because there's such a depth of the way to different tequilas taste and the way different mezcals taste just because like just because tequila all uses blue weber agave doesn't necessarily mean that all of them taste the same there are some very very interesting characteristics that come from some tequilas i'm not super well versed in it and i'm even less well versed in mezcal but that is a spirit that i just wish that i had more time to spend time on uh and yeah i guess resources too because there's at least five or six different mezcals that i can buy now one of which includes a worm at the bottom Thanks, Fine Line. I love that. And eventually, God, the fact that it is close by and it was, I think, 30 bucks, I think, it'll find its way to this bar one day. 
bugs in your cocktails. That'll be, that's, that's a good idea. And we'll move on to something else. So let's see, moving on to something different. Um, another th another uh, cocktail that comes to mind when I think of the summer, when I think of the summer, I think of the beach, I think of warm weather, I think of swim, swim trunks, I think, of, I think of hanging out with my family and friends and just overall having a good time. And when I think about like having a really good time, something blended comes to mind, something very tropical comes to mind, pina coladas come to mind. And so although it wasn't necessarily somebody's very specific recommendation that the pina colada is going to be the drink of the summer um there was an article that came out recently that i think got that got i think less hype than it should have about supposedly how to take your pina coladas to the next level using a simple secret ingredients that i'm going to give away the answer to but for the sake of teasing i'll just uh, I'll, I'll tease it in there uh the next cocktail is the pina colada specifically the pina colada according to sweet liberty which i'm gonna take a wild guess and say is a bar somewhere maybe i don't know that's a <laughs> the tabloids and stuff i'm a pina colada pin pina coholic that took me a couple tries but i respect it this is sweet liberty's pina colada sweet liberties liberties uh liberty is in it her name is liberty and this is hers, possessive pina colada. In case you can't see it, it's okay. That pineapple is going down. I didn't give it a name. I really should have given it a name. You are Sweet Liberty. The pineapple's name is Sweet Liberty. And this, and this is her pina colada. And that is worth celebrating. So, I love making pina coladas now. A friend of mine teased me one day. He came over and he was like, we're doing pina coladas at your place. Uh, oh yeah, that's where the fly, that's where the flies were. They were hanging on my pineapple over here, you bottom feeders. It's okay, there was only like one. I was making a big deal out of it. Uh, but he came over and he was like, we're doing pina coladas because we went to this one, um, it was an outdoor uh, wine and food festival, just a food festival really, somewhere over in Maniunk. And they were, they were, they, there was this stand that had a line literally all the way down the street of people going back and getting these pina coladas that were actually made and drunk out of the pineapple itself. And the line went on for like the entire, the entire row was completely of this line. They are like, this feels so overhyped. So we went back uh, a week later, we played some board games and we made our own pina coladas inside of pineapples. And I'm gonna now share the trick with all of you. Specifically the trick for making, doing the whole, you know, pina colada inside of the pineapple, but also apparently Sweet Liberty's tip for making the best pina colada ever, which evidently involves coffee beans, the beans, and uh, sherry. It might just be the beans. I was really excited when I saw this because uh, it was written by a particular uh, cocktail creator that I follow. Kara Newman has written a number of books that I'm uh, a big fan of. One of them including, it was called Nightcap, and it is all about different nightcap cocktails and stuff. And I love that book. Uh, she writes for, I think, Wine Enthusiast, I believe. It's fun stuff. So technically you could say this is a, another Wine Enthusiast recommendation. I cut this pineapple, quite simply. We're just gonna cut it right off the top. We don't really need the, fr the fronds or anything. Uh, we might use it for a garnish. There we go. It's a little bit tough to get through it at first, but once you give it a little bit of energy, it goes through. Hello, bud. I was saying to the top of Sweet Liberty, who has now been decapitated. Next, what we're gonna do, I feel like we're gonna watch this with a cocktail angle. I'm gonna try this. I don't think I've ever actually utilized the pineapple as a, as a glass on stream before, so I'm gonna walk through the entire process. Here's our pineapple. There we go. I'm gonna put this knife away. We really don't need it right now. Not anymore, at least. And we're gonna get our patented pineapple decenterifier. It's not patented, or maybe it is. It's literally, it's it's this thing. This is, it's. I got the metal one because the plastic ones always seem to break. One time I was trying to screw in a, uh, an umbrella at the beach. Um, it was a plastic bottom to it, and um, I broke the damn thing, and uh, we had to leave the umbrella there. It was fun. If you get one of these things, they're very, very sharp on the bottom. It is literally as simple as popping it on the top, pushing it in just a little bit to get it started, and just like, just like twist. All I'm, do all I'm doing is twisting. You can hold the side of the pineapple. Don't put your finger there. It'll get cut off, and you just twist. And it, it's a little bit difficult at first. You can even twirl the pineapple, too. Oh, this is gushy. That's okay. I really should have done this over a plate, but it's okay. This is why we have the bar mat, and that's why we have extras. And as you just kind of twirl your way in there, it's like putting a 
It is quite literally like putting an umbrella in the sand at the beach. And you just kind of keep going at this until you feel like you've gotten to the bottom. I got a good idea of um, approximately how long this thing is. Naturally, if you go too far in, you're going to wind up breaching the bottom of the pineapple. But so far, we're doing all right. I can kind of feel on the inside. This is a little, a little squishy up here, so I know I've gotten that part already. It's still kind of thick at the bottom. Just kind of make our way through there. You have to be careful because there are sharp things inside of here. And if it does breach the surface, it might start leaking. Could cut you because not all pineapple... I guess there are small pineapples out there that um, are not going to be big enough to actually withstand the pineapple core. I love those, says Rai. These things are so cool. I'm so glad I bought one on Amazon. Also, we'll have a bunch of pineapple juice after this, and I do have a specific apparatus for putting the pineapple juice in, and I think I just reached the bottom. So, that's all we need there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this up, and I realize I don't have, I did say I have a container for the pineapple juice, but I don't have a container for all the pineapple uh, slices and stuff that I had. So actually, real quick, before I continue, I'm just gonna real quickly run downstairs and go grab a, a container that's big enough to put these pineapple slices in, because I'm not using all of them. I will need a blender. I also have the blender, so please enjoy the vibe for a brief moment while I get a big enough container. It won't be long. It shan't be long now. I know exactly where I'm going to go get it. We'll return. I'm back, and I got my container. We shan't give those little bugs what they want. We'll use that later. Anyways, so now it's quite simple as so we'll go back so we can all watch what happens. You pull it out. It's not, it's not difficult to do at all. And then you just quite sit, just, just separate it. There we go. You got all your juice here. That's there. That's all there is. And inside, and this guy. I got a bit of pineapple juice left over. Let me grab a little container for that. I got this guy over here. It used to be apple cider vinegar. Got some experiments going. My funnel. My funnel. Here we go. Pop that up on top. We'll just kind of pour. There's a. There can be a bit of. There can be a bit of juice in here. Let's see. How much juice? How much juice do we have? Well, that's a little cocked, don't you think? Cocktail. It's a joke. Maybe. Who knows? How much juice is inside? Oh, it's it's leaking. That's okay. Oh, I see. It was leaking out the bottom. <laughs> I understand now. I must have I must have breached it at some point. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it's definitely leaking out the bottom. So I went a little bit too far on that. That's okay. We all make mistakes. Honestly, it's not even much of a mistake. I'll just take this thing and I'll put it into the bucket and we'll move on. We'll do something else. Um, but yeah, I'll save that for, I guess, something else. There we go. And quite simply, to take this off, it's kind of, it's, it's not that difficult. Use a knife. It's a knife. Nice. Yeah, just kind of like go down and just like... And go down and do that and it'll fall right off and I'll put that over into my container over here which I specifically grabbed for this. We will be using some pineapple chunks. Naturally, it's a pina colada. Why not use a piece of the container that we grabbed specifically for it? There we go. It's all in there. This is a very... This pineapple came, ac came apart way too easily. Interesting. Got any Prime Day sale recommendations? If anybody else out there streams, uh, the microphone that I use on my desk over there, it's a HyperX, is on sale. I bought another one because this audio over here needs a bit of an upgrade. Um, let's see, what else was there? There was also a capture card on sale as well. Um, I honestly, I probably should have looked for more mixological stuff, but for the most part, I'm not like hankering for anything specific that I've been like really trying to keep my eye on. Actually, you know what I was? I was just reminded earlier today of one of those, um, one of those foamers that can take anything and turn it into a foam. I forgot to look for those. Don't need any more of that. Put that down there. Um, remember, or somebody remind me, because I will probably forget, that there are pineapple fronds down there, and we will probably use them for garnish. So now that we have, this is our container. So we need to put that off to the side, because we don't really need that container right now. Instead, we're actually going to make the other pieces of the pina colada by naturally grabbing a blender, blending it all together. That's the way we do things. <sighs> yeah, out of here. All right. So evidently, the secret to the good pina colada. It's not it's not using the pineapple as a as a cup. Although that is really awesome and I would recommend if anybody's got the resources for it, do it. It's fun. 
it impresses your friends. It impressed all of my fraternity brothers, so that was very, very fun and very messy. And um, I accidentally took the pineapple bags with me to work one day, and I left it in the container, and I came back, and there were so many flies in my bag. It was wild. This was months ago. Nothing to do with what's currently happening right now. It's just disgusting. Um, let's see. So it involves putting coffee beans inside of this. So we'll get to that point. I will recite the entire recipe for you now. First off is to, to combine, according to Sweet Liberty, which was the pineapple, but is also a bar, I believe, to take one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of their house rum blend, which is apparently equal parts coconut rum, Plantation Striggins Fancy Pineapple Rum, and Bacardi Quattro. I don't have any of that stuff. I couldn't find any of it at the liquor store. So I'm gonna do my best to more or less kind of mimic these ingredients here. One of them is coconut rum, one of them is pineapple rum, and one is Bacardi Quattro. And I don't really know what Quattro Bacardi is. That makes me think that it's all four Bacardis. I'm gonna look that up now. Bacardi Quattro. What about Bacardi Cinco? Explore our rum now. Bacardi four year. Oh, four year. Cuatro. Cuatro. I get it because four year aged rum. So it's got to be like an aged rum. I don't have their aged rum. So instead, I'm just going to use a different rum that also is golden in nature. Is it an approximation? Yes. Is it a good approximation? No. But this is what we have. And ideally, if you were making your own summer cocktail, wouldn't you just use the, you ha what you have? Unless you're like really, really bougie about it. In which case, dude, I respect the hustle. So what we're going to do is instead of that particular combination and putting in a, a, what was it, an ounce and a half of their specific rum blend, we're going to do uh, an ounce and a half full of our own kind of approximation in equal parts. So it's a half an ounce of each of them, about 15 milliliters. I will first start off with our coconut rum, which is going to be our Malibu, naturally. I don't know of any other really good coconut rums um, that I have accessible. I just love coconuts, so I'm going to keep with it. So we're going to do about a half an ounce of our Malibu rum. There's a lot. There's going to be a lot going on in this particular um, in this particular pina colada. So we're in for a ride. This is essentially the halfway point. There's not soup. There's not a lot of recovering this evening. I've been uh, working myself hard. Next, we're going to add a half an ounce of some sort of pineapple rum. Now, I don't have specifically pineapple rum, but I do have pineapple vodka. A little nip of it left. There's not that much. Uh, and I also have Calico Jack Pineapple Coconut Rum. So I'm just gonna use probably the Calico Jack. I don't really need to use the Stoli this time as a, as a means to kind of approximate. Again, all just an approximation. Every attempt are valid. That's how, the, in my opinion, that's how the cocktail world should be. Inviting and not gatekept. So now we'll add a half an ounce, about 50 milliliters, all equal parts over here. I modified my ratios just a bit. There's a bit more Malibu than there is Calico Jack in there. I'm not a big fan of Calico Jack, but this is what we have, and we're trying to utilize all the bottles in our collection. And next what we'll do is in place of the uh, Bacardi Quattro, we'll use uh, an Appleton Estate rum because I, I kind of like this flavor. I want to explore it a little bit more. And it also seemed like the closest in color to what I could find in a Bacardi Quattro. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to add a half an ounce of that as well. So far, it's all just liquid in there. Where's all the, where's the pineapple? We'll get there, I promise. A single ounce of pineapple juice. Now... Evidently, there was some pineapple juice that we had uh, access to because of we actually cored a pineapple, if, if you didn't notice the headless pineapple over here. But I got it literally all over uh, the mat here. So instead, uh, as a backup, we got a big old can of pineapple juice. Went to the store and tried to find individual small containers of pineapple juice. And the only thing they had was like these four containers of plastic that looked really, really browned on the inside. Anna and I both noped out of that situation. So we bought a whole can of it, and um, evidently I'm going to open it up, and I'm definitely going to try to conserve this pineapple juice as much as possible. I'm not using all the pineapple juice. This is a lot of pineapple juice. Um, I'm just gonna open the can here. There we go. And then and then we'll pour in an ounce, and then I'll pour the rest of it into the, a Bacardi container that I have, how appropriate. So this was a full ounce of our pineapple juice. Uh, I don't know if I shook this very well. I probably should have done that. I'm gonna try my best to do so and not cut my finger. There we go. Mixologists do the mixy thing. That's why they call us mixologists, because we do the mixy thing. Oh, I need to put another hole on the other side because that's how physics works. There we go. Oh, there we go. A little bit of air on one side so that it can vent out to the other. That's how, whoa, that's a lot of, whoop, okay. Yep, even more pineapple juice, hello. There we go. 
And now, I will conserve the rest of the pineapple juice. The only way I know how. Putting it in a big old container and doing stuff to it. Um, I need the funnel again. Hello, funnel. Let's hope that this works and doesn't get everywhere. And if it does get everywhere, that's fine. We got it on camera. That's the best part about it. All right, get him, bud. Get him, Dole. Wow, that has a very interesting arc to it. Oh, and we're pouring on the bar. Hold on. Hold on. Oh my god, it's pouring. Oh my god, it's getting on my keyboard. This is not good. Oh my goodness. Ew. We got some paper towels. Oh, this is going to be terrible after the fact. Oh, it's in my keyboard. Oh my goodness gracious. I should get a keyboard for those Prime Day sales. Hey, oh, got them. Wow. That is so. Ew. That is nasty. That's what I get, dude. That is what I get. I'm gonna pour it from this direction now. Get him. Speed. Speed. I am speed. It's working out so much better this time. What the heck? It's all about confidence. Confidence is key. Oh, now it's dripping. Oh, now you're gonna drip on me. No! Oh my goodness gracious! Wow, this fills up an entire bottle of Bacardi. That's wild. There we go. Maybe I should just be, like, less confident about this. Less overconfident and pouring it literally all over. Like, there's electronics over here, dude. Thanks, Dole. Get in the bun. Oh, I miss the garbage can. Oh, can this summer get any worse? No, it can't possibly get worse. Everything's on fire, haven't you heard? Anyways. That was wild. <laughs> oh my gosh, welcome to the bar with an X. Where experience comes second. I'm going to put this somewhere. What am I going to do with this? I'm going to... Mm. Here we go. Put that. Put that right there. We're going to conveniently forget about it until later. Pina coladas. Nobody ever stayed clean while making pina coladas. At least not in my experience. Anyways, so uh, what's next? I'm glad you asked. Next, we're going to add three ounces of cocoa mix. That's about 88 milliliters. The cocoa mix, according to Sweet Liberty, is going to include three parts of cocoa lopez and two parts of coconut milk. So if we do the math and we take three and we divide it by five, it's still not fun math. So I'm going to take one ounce, one thing. So there's three parts to that part. Two ounces, three parts, five parts, whole parts, and ah wild i'm gonna approximate it i've got some cream of coconut i've also got some coconut water that's what we're gonna do pina coladas at least to me is not really an exact science either i didn't even think when i was making them for my buds that i'd use an exact science doesn't really matter it always tastes good got our cream of coconut here which now i just realized i kept in the are you supposed to refrigerate this shake well refrigerate after opening i did refrigerate it now it is completely solid that is awesome Oh, it's actually not that... You know what? We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. If we need three full ounces and we need more Coca Lopez, a.k.a. cream of coconut, than the other one, then I'm just going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to do that. No, it's not working. Here we go. No, I'm going to do this anyways. I'm going to put a glob of cream of coconut in there. This makes me slightly uncomfortable. Wow, that's incredible. Get, get the... I'm going to have to use the assistance of my tools for this. Eh. <laughs> Dominic, you popped it at the perfect time. Oh my god. 14 months, my guy. <laughs> oh my god. Cream of coconut brings me such visceral humor it's so primal to me i put uh, there's cream of coconut in there you know what I'm, I'm satisfied with that now we need coconut water where's my coconut water at there you are it's a can of coconut water do i have to shake this one i'm going to maybe i don't know chill and shake well yeah dude i can shake that dom says nah man it's been 14 not 13 did i say 14 did i say 13 i certainly meant 14 that's what i read on the screen it's okay, we've had a couple of drinks by this point. Oh, wild stuff. Now I need some coconut water. My approximation is we're gonna use, a, a, like, I don't know, an ounce and a half, like just shy of an ounce and a half. I can actually pour this thing out, so. Ounce and a half, other side. Oh, that has chunks of coconut. That's actually got chunks of coconut in it. Huh. Oh, <laughs> it's coconut. 
coconut water with pulp. Naturally hydrating. I didn't realize I bought that. Goya coconut water with pulp. <laughs> Dude, I love those coconut waters. They're good. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's fucking good coconut water. Yeah, dude. I love that. Holy schmadoodles. That's delicious. Man, recommendation. Goya, sounds like a medical condition. You're thinking of the gout, which may also be in this bottle. Really, who knows, honestly. Oh my goodness, that's great. Well, I have a spare container, so um, I'll try to pour the rest of the Goya in there. Where was my funnel at? This is probably the most arduous cocktail of the evening. The one that requires the most work. And it's got pulp, I love it, it's got pulp. Wait, 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 actually pour this, when I pour this out, I gotta show you all, because there's actually, there's pieces of coconut in there. And that's awesome. Oh, this is gonna be too much for the bottle. Too much for the bottle? No, just enough for the bottle. Thank you. Into the bucket. The recycling bucket specifically. This is great. Wow. Yo, yeah, yeah, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Uh, this is this is awkward. There's a blender in the way. Uh, let me take this. Hold on. This is uh, used to be an apple cider vinegar container. Um, I know. Really weird shit happening here today. Just, just, just. Come on. I want to show the people. It's like an unboxing. It's a bottle unwrapping. You sound like you've had a few drinks already tonight, and I'm absolutely jealous. You know what? It hasn't even been that much. Although, one of them was espresso, so... Um, caffeine. Come on, dude. Get... Get just a... <laughs> there goes the shades. Alright, well... Hopefully you can get the idea. There's things in there. Let me put a cap on this. That way I can invert it. There's actually bits of coconut in there. I love that. I cannot wait to drink that in the morning. Or that in the morning. Either way, it doesn't really matter. I want to do something in the morning. Probably work. Yeah, that's, that's probably what's going to happen. Anyway, we're um, halfway through this pina colada. What's next? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, we the, the special part here, I was mentioning, I was teasing, that there is a very specific thing that you do to the pina colada to make it the best pina colada ever. There's a lot of words in there that Karen Newman put together that I'm not going to recite because you can read the recipe on your own in the article, which I will link after this video is all over. Um, but apparently it increases things. It adds just a subtle bitterness that is barely detectable to the pina colada to make it even better. Now the espresso that I made was uh, not sponsored. I, mean, I never get sponsors over here. It's not just not that kind of show. It was created in part by this Nicaraguan Ginotega blend that I got once upon a time from a place down in South Carolina. I know nothing of where these beans came from. It is rather irresponsible of me, but here we are. We are going to add, I am so tempted to add a bunch of coffee beans, but I'm not going to. It says specifically two coffee beans. This is as it pertains to the ounce measurements that we have here. If you are making an entire blender of this stuff, I feel like what you'd want to do is add more coffee beans. Maybe in a blender of this size, you'd add like six or eight. Not really sure. Dude. Dom says, dude, it's been a fat minute, minute since I've been in chat. How have you been, my friend? It has been a hot minute, but that's okay. You come in when you're available. That's the whole beauty of the, the whole philosophy of the bar, is that you don't necessarily need to be at the bar every night. That's for the alcoholics, I say, and I jest. Uh, but for the people to come in every once in a while, it's just as pleasant, especially being in this bartending position to be able to see what happens as people go through their lives and come back with stuff and whatnot. Well, he says, buckle up, folks. As we continue, we'll mix up this pina colada over here. All we need now is a single one inch cube. Use two if they were smaller of pineapple. Apparently we don't need a lot of pineapple chunk in there. Now, we did just core an entire pineapple. So there is at least one pineapple chunk in here of at least one inch in size. They are smaller, so I'm gonna add two. Just as the instruction says, you gotta do the cooking by the book, because if we do the cooking by the book, well, we have a better reference for when we want to change things up. So now that we have our rum blend, our pineapple juice, our cocoa mix, and our coffee beans and our pineapple chunk, there is one other ingredient here that we actually uh, add at the end, and that is specifically some sherry. But aside from that, we put everything in here and we put a bit of crushed ice in there. I'm not going to use crushed ice, I'm just going to use the entirety of the United States in the form of ice cubes, because that's the game that I like to play. And uh, then we'll just blend this thing up and we'll see what happens.
Dom says, so I've doubled my body count in the last two months and I've been smoking a lot more recently. A piece of that feels like it's congratulatory. A piece of that also feels like it's perhaps not congratulatory. Either way, everyone's experiences are valid there. So far, my body count remains unchanged for the past almost nine years. And again, there's good, there's good to that. There's bad to that. Everyone's got life. But I'm looking for a relationship again. I hate to say it, Dom. But I'm not open. I think you came to the wrong place. But this is the right place to talk about it. So long as you feel the need to share. We appreciate that, that people share in their story. I put a bit of uh, ice cubes in here. You could probably... It specifically recommends to use crushed ice. We're going to try to go for a more flush flavor here. We're not really trying to make a slushy. We're not really trying to make a milkshake. We're just trying to make something that has enough thickness that you can enjoy it with the other pieces of pineapple and stuff in there. By the way, the states that have been affected are Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Delaware, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland. Also, uh, that's not Delaware. Oh, Rhode Island. Uh, we also have Montana. That's probably Wyoming or Colorado. And then Texas. For all those in their states, you're welcome. We're in the, you're in the pina colada this evening. And now what we gotta do is pop this uh, top pop 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 this top on, plug in the blender, and give it a roll. Things are about to get noisy, folks. So we'll let you know. We'll give you we'll give you a hand wave when it's all over. Let's blend this sucker to uh, milkshake mode, puree mode. We'll see what happens. Here we go. I can see the coffee beans. A moment, please. This is specifically supposed to incorporate the coffee beans and at least half the coffee beans because there's only two of them are on the side of the glass. Excuse me. Rise points out there was not a single tropical state in there. Yeah, it's just how it is, I guess. Blending time, we're, we're still gonna still go. I'll wave when we're finished. There we go. That's what it's all about. Alrighty. That's all we need there. That is... Oh, it's a peanut coladas! Do you like pina coladas? Yes, I do. Getting caught in the rain. So what I just realized is that there is um there's not enough liquid in here to go into. I just realized the pineapple that we cored, I punctured at the bottom, so I can't use it for the glass because this is not thick enough. This is not a very very thick pina colada. So instead, we are going to induct this pineapple into the I guess the other the crowd of pieces of things that get used. Oh, I'm dripping more pineapple juice in the bar, my goodness. Um, but I will grab another glass in spite of it. So thank you, Sweet Liberty, what we named our cocktail, or what we named our uh, pineapple over here for your great service. Let me grab a glass that looks like it's going to be able to take all of the mound that we just put into it. I'll grab this one, put this over here, do a little bit of cleanup. Tom says, oh, I bleached my hair again too. Dude, that's a style that I've considered like adding color to my hair doing a little bit of bleaching to it. And actually, the last time I went for a haircut, I did ask my hairstylist about it. I was like, what do you think if I like did a little highlights and stuff? And uh, he was honest with me about it. And he was like, yeah, you could have it done uh, if you want to. I think, I actually, I didn't specifically ask him whether he think it would be good or not. I was just trying to see what my options are. So I'm gonna take this pineapple and what I'm gonna do is, just because I don't wanna try, I wanna, don't wanna waste all the pineapple. I'm gonna grab the knife. Where's the knife? There you are. I'm gonna put it in, in the inside and grab the rest of that core there because it still can be pretty useful. It's thick, but it can be infused. And I like that. And actually what I'll do too, I'll actually, I'll step you whole through the process. What you can do with excess pineapple rind is you can create a drink called tapache. And so I will, I will do that a little real quick before we pour the, the pina colada in here. So let's bring the angle over here so we can top up this guy over here. So tapache is a fermented pineapple drink. Essentially what you do is you can take the pineapple pieces itself, you can take the pineapple skin, and what you do is you essentially put it into some water with some brown sugar and other constituents. Um, I don't have a specific recipe for tapache because I haven't quite figured out a recipe that I'm a huge fan of yet. Um, and you just let it ferment, you let it go. 
and you let it sit for a while so it starts getting bubbly and fermented and stuff and it's it's delicious um the last time i made tapache i accidentally like i don't know what i did with it but it kind of smelled like formaldehyde which is apparently totally normal um maybe yours will turn out that way it tasted fine uh it didn't kill anybody didn't kill me at least didn't kill the friends that i shared it with so i think we were, we were okay there um the other piece of that is you can also just leave like pineapple juice and it'll also start kind of carbonating up on its own and doing that little fermenting thing. I find that uh, via, via accident, totally, I found that using fermented pineapple juice, uh, the stuff that's got a little bit of the bubbles in it, is really, really tasty in cocktails, as opposed to the stuff that you'd get from cans. I'm trying to make it a habit of, if I have pineapples available from streams and stuff, to utilize the fresh pineapple juice that we get from it. Obviously, I completely, I utterly failed this time um, because... As you, as you watched from earlier, I got pineapple just literally everywhere. I can't use the stuff that's seeped into the bar and my keyboard at this point. Um, but we can certainly use the rind. The rind is good. The rind should be used. And honestly, I'm not perfect with this stuff. And uh, neither is most people in the world. Um, but if you can do a little bit and you think you can get some good stuff from it, I think you should give it a try. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to preserve lemon peels. And um, one thing that I was reminded about actually is like, you know, if you don't, if you can't use all the lemon peels, you can just freeze them. You can just freeze the lemons and then get to it whenever you can. So that's something that I will give my recommendation on because I find lemon preserves are really tasty. Uh, I found tapache very tasty. And the list of other kind of food scrap ingredients, uh, food scrap recipes that I'm learning about continues to grow. So if you stick around for that journey, maybe you'll gain some insight from that too. Not that's just a it's a me me shamelessly plugging that uh, I like I like this I like this hobby of mine. It's fun. All right, we'll put that guy down there. Put the knife away, and now we'll proceed to the cocktail, right? And then I'm gonna give things a big cleanup over here because this is absolutely insane. <laughs> How much of a mess we made over here? You can make a great pineapple tea. Oh, that's a great point too. That Arai points out. You can make anything in tea, really good teas and stuff. Saw what you did in there. My pineapple knows what you did in the dark. <laughs> Pina colada. My penis know what you did in the dark. That's <laughs> it's a new it's a new Fallout Boy pineapple boy song. That's what it is. It's not Fallout Boy. It's Tropical Boy. It's Pina Boy. Pina Boy, Monsieur Colada. There we go. This is our Pina Colada. We're gonna see how much liquid I actually get in this. Um, we'll see. This is our attempt at the Sweet Liberty's Pina Colada. It's liquidy, it's got coffee beans in it, it's got stuff going on, and it's frothy. I like frothiness. I love pina coladas very much. So when the when a pina colada when I thought when I saw this pina colada recipe pop up, I was like, yeah, this feels like a drink for the summer. Uh it could probably be filled up a bit more. I just didn't I didn't have all that liquid, so that's just how it'll be. But that is okay. Probably wouldn't drink the entire thing anyway. Otherwise, we'd be very drunk around here. Now, the important part here for our Sweet Liberty Pina Colada is we need to float sherry on top of it. Specifically, they recommend an Oloroso sherry, or sorry, a Pedro Jimenez sherry. Um, I don't have that. So I got this dry sherry here. I think Pedro Jimenez, for at least my research, is going to be the more dry, the more red of sherries. I think less on the sweet side. I find that this dry sherry probably will work. Maybe. We'll see. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to garnish this thing. So what we're going to need is we're going to garnish with mint, cherry, and a parasol. I got mint over here. I got cherries, naturally. We be bothered. I'm going to see no cherries. I just got to get those cherries because they're way buried in the back of the fridge. There we go. I'm going to get mint as well. And what else was there? I forgot already. I'd forgotten already. My goodness. Oh, it was also a parasol. I got those things. Got a cherry from back here. Oh, evidently. Somehow this thing... Oh, no. The safety button is definitely not up. There we go. Grab a bar spoon to grab a cherry or so. Oh, actually, there's only... No way! Oh, I've been teased! There's absolutely no cherries in here! That's wild. There is not a single cherry in this container. Wow. I've been teased. Incredible. I have to go get more cherries. Wow. Cameron, why would you do that to yourself? Uh, I do have more cherries, do I not? Yes, I do. There we go. Oh, these are the Ah. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'll use those cherries. These cherries were a gift. They were infused by some buddies of mine. 
That's great. You know who you are. Oh yeah, and I'll use these ones. They've been sitting in moonshine. They're good cherries. We'll pop one of those up on top. Oh, it fell right in. Why am I not surprised? There's a cherry in there nonetheless. Oh, and those taste so good. We'll put some mint, put some mint sprigs in there to dress things up a little bit before we get to the final piece, the final piece of the puzzle. Gotta get those things nice and as if you're lounging on a beach. Is this the best pina colada you've ever seen? No. No, it is not. However, for the purposes of this, it's pretty good for my standards. Let's put this guy back here. Let's put things in the fridge. Three. Oh, it's a tiny mini fridge. It doesn't work super well. And we also need a little parasol. So let me grab a little green parasol, just like my photo says. A little green parasol. There we go. So, so far, we've spent a number of time, we've spent a number of minutes on this particular drink. So as it goes for, for me, as it goes for easy drinks for the summer, this is certainly not my pick. But, I mean, I've had pina coladas before, so I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how this one takes. You didn't smack the mint leaves to express the oil because these mint leaves remind me of palm trees. I can't get up there and smack the palm trees. That's not the vibe I'm going for, right? It's not the vibe I'm going for. But you're right, I didn't. So now the other part here is we're gonna float a quarter of an ounce of sherry on top of this. I put, uh, let me grab my bar spoon again. And we're going to float just the slightest bit of sherry on top such that it makes a layer on top of our pina colada. Now, my sherry... Ooh, actually, you kind of can see... Oh, you can kind of see the layer happening there. This is a very chunky pina colada. It's not chunky enough, I don't think. But if I kind of whisk away some of the... Uh, some of the solids up on top. You can see that there is a layer that has formed there. Execution, not, not really on the good side. However, we tried it for the first time and that's good. Rice says every pina canana needs a little bondage. That's what it's all about. Oh, I see what you were talking about in terms of slapping the mint. Well, in that case, <laughs> slaps the entire drink. Yeah, so there is a little bit of a layering that you can see there and it actually kind of looks like the sherry is slowly but surely making its way to the bottom as all the solid stuff kind of comes up to the top. Let me see if I can modify that angle just a little bit, be a better idea of what that is. Very nice. All right, let's take a look at that from my angle. That is definitely not the prettiest pina colada, but I can definitely see that angle. Not that bad. Try to get the nice little macro shot going on here. Beautiful, beautiful pina colada. I also think I completely forgot to take a picture of the other guy. Oh, I think I moved it. I'm so sorry. I'll put that back. There we go. Get the whole thing in there too. Well, I catch up on a on a thing that I forgot to take a picture of earlier, and that was the um. Oh, that was the. Oh, what was that thing called? Oh, that was the paloma negra, which was the the, the black paloma. Very nice. All right, put that back over there. Let's taste this guy. I'm looking forward to this. <sighs> Smells like mint. Who knew? A little bit of pineapple. Also, who knew? I love that. Oh my god, I'm such a tease. Let's go with... Use my paper straws for this. Trying to be good for the environment. The, the pina colada? It is very wet. It is a very wet pina colada. Just like my summer. Just like how my summer will be. A wild and wet summer. It's totally not filled with flames like up in Canada. And also because pools and, you know, my, being in my bathing suit and stuff and going swimming and stuff. It's pretty good. This is a very balanced, it's a very sweet pina colada. I think there is just enough, there is just enough rum in there that I'm getting those rum notes. Not really the Calico Jack, the pineapple coconut rum. Not really the, I can taste the Malibu or what I think the Malibu is because it's just coconut rum, it tastes like coconut to me, which combines with, I guess that is the only, oh, there's also the cream of coconut in there and the coconut water, which apparently has pulp in it, which I thought was freaking awesome. So it is very coconutty. It is nice and sweet. This is probably one of the sweeter pina coladas that I've had. And there is just slightly, very, 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 very slightly 
this like texture to it that I can feel specifically on my tongue. There are bits of like the coffee bean that's been macerated into the drink has is almost providing a slight, slight sandpapery texture to it that is just different than what I would normally get with the pina colada. For the most part, because of the inclusion of the cream of coconut in there, usually very smooth. Depending on how much ice you have in there, it can be very chilling and stuff. This is actually not a very chill pina colada. I like mine a little bit chiller than this. As far as the sweetness goes, that's good. Now, the other piece of this is the fact that you have the sherry up on top, which, because it's floating up there, I don't think you can get by sipping this thing. Now, my reference specifically has a straw in this, so I imagine as you drink it, you will get those sherry notes at the end to really round out, make things a little bit more sherry desserty, almost like a little bit of a digestive after you're done with your pina colada. I'm not gonna chug the entire pina colada. However, I will go in for a bigger sip see what's going on with that sherry. Hmm. 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 Oh, I do like that. And I just got a piece of one of the coconut pulp in there. Ooh, that's great. The sherry, oh, that's, that's lovely. The sherry is almost a little raisiny. Oh, I love the taste of sherry. I haven't had that in a while. There was a time when I was watching, I don't remember what show it was, but I was sitting there and I was drinking sherry as I watched the show. It was such a vibe. I don't remember what show it was. It might have been The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel around like season three or something. Uh, Cause I think I saw one of the characters drinking sherry as well. That is such an interesting pairing with the pina colada. I've never had that flavor of raisiny grape type sherry notes kind of dry and almost, it's nutty. It's a nutty kind of sherry. It's nutty, but it's also raisiny. Actually more so on the nutty notes than the raisin notes, but those flavors seem to come to mind. They kind of intermingle for me for those more fortified wines like your Madeiras, your Ports, your Sherries and stuff. It blends with the smoothness of the Pina Colada. I'm actually like, I'm a little bit torn here because there's a piece of me that wants to believe that this particular Pina Colada iteration was supposed to be less ice forward because it says specifically not to put that much ice in there you only need, and you specifically want to use crushed ice which means it's going to wind up diluting a lot faster it's going to be a lot smoother because you have tinier pieces of ice cubes and less big chunks in there like i sort of had in there but i think we blended it quite well it is a very interesting pair i really like that pairing with the sherry i think the reason why i like it, like i like this differently than other pina coladas is the that inclusion there my pina coladas are not super nutty but really i don't see I guess, the, unless you were sipping this, actually, if you were sipping this as intended, right, from your straw at the bottom, from the bottom of the pina colada, all the way to the top of the drink as the sherry bubbles down, that's probably the experience you're going for. Or if you want to sip it, you will get that sherry first, and then the pina colada. And now I'm trying to think, if we mix the whole thing together, I just kind of agitate it a bit, I want to see how everything tastes when it's all been combined. Get those thick pineapple pieces in there. That's good. Yeah, it's that it's that nutty fruit component of the sherry that really tastes well with that there. That's almost that's almost different. It's even less on the coconut now. It's more so pineapple and fruit flavor. It's almost kind of like a fruit snack. There is a piece of me that's almost like if you've ever had those tropical fruit snack gub packets, and it's like specifically the tropical ones that has for sure like a lime flavor and a coconut flavor or a pineapple flavor maybe even a pina colada flavor this reminds me of taking the entire bag or at least half the bag and chewing it all in the same time it's delightful it's delightful right asks me am i going on the next season of drink masters am i going on the next season certainly not uh i haven't even gotten past the first episode yet it has been a very busy last two weeks and the last time when i watched the first episode i was busy doing grunt work at work so that's the only reason I got through it. And I need to go back to that episode. I really didn't give it the time that it truly deserves. That's a slow, That's a show that I'm going to have to slow down and go through. Um, actually, maybe I'll just do it while I'm on vacation. Oh, another thing. I'm going on vacation in a couple weeks, so we will probably miss a bar with an X stream. I think that's to more towards the end of the month. One of the reasons that I was doing this whole like little review thing is because I'm going to hang out with my family, and I want to see if there's a, a top drink that we find that I can bring back and share with them. So far, I'm a fan of that... Paloma Negra, and also just like coffee, just like coffee and tonic water, which is like, that's fine and all, but it doesn't, it's not very cocktail-y unless you put some gin into it. It's just not complex enough for me to feel like I want to share with the rest of the fan to make them very proud of me. 
This pina colada is pretty good though. And it's gonna be much better than the pina colada that I made the last time that we were down there where I barely knew how to use a blender. I stuck a wooden spoon inside of the blender and got wood chips in it and it was a total mess. So uh, anything's better than that. We're moving up in the world, we truly are. As far as pina coladas go, that's pretty good. The, the pineapple chunks are a bit they're a bit stringy. I think the pineapple I used is kind of more on the younger side, so it's still kind of tough in there, and I'm getting a bit of those stringy notes. Um, so if I had a better blender, it would probably make that better. But not this time. No, no. I'll have a better. We'll have a better blender on our wedding registry eventually. So that was cocktail number three. Rye says rum and coke and peanuts. That sounds good. I like the peanut flavor. I wonder how a rum and coke and a little bit of like whiskey would go because some notes can be because some whiskeys can be a little a little nutty i think old granddad is supposed to be very peanutty um we'll move on to the next cocktail in just a moment i'm gonna do a significant amount of cleanup here because evidently we've made an entire mess which is good which is good we want to be making messes that's the whole point of things um but i'm gonna be extra careful as i take this very very uh, very very pineapple juice full uh, bar mat here. I'm gonna try to dislodge it from itself. There's so much liquid in this. There we go. We're gonna bring it back this way. We're going to slide it over. There we go. Dump it right into the bucket. I'm not pissing, I promise. There we go. Right in there. All of what's left of the little yellow bits. I'm not peeing, I promise. I promise I'm not. I would never do that. And now we'll just grab another bar mat. We'll do a little bit of cleanup over here because it's necessary. And, um, well, I think I may need a new keyboard. I'm running out of paper towels. That's all right. I, I, look, we can't possibly make a huge mess again, right? We'll, we'll, be, we'll be back. Back with another... Uh, we'll be back with more cocktails after a message from our sponsors. Thanks, subs. You're doing great. Thanks, guys. Guys and gals and those in between or beyond. Yep, I'm out of paper towel. No, that, there's a recycling bin over there for a specific reason. So, uh... How about them flyers, huh? Hockey, right? Yeah, uh, sports are cool. I don't watch a lot of sports. I have seen some of the hockey games, though. Hockey's cool, you yeah? know? Specifically the flyers, because I'm in Philadelphia. It makes a lot of sense, right? Support the teams in your local area. It makes you fit in with the crowd. It's lovely. I didn't even use a little bit of water on that. I'll wipe it down with just a tad, just a tad bit of water, just a little damp. I don't want to ruin the varnish on this guy. And then we'll sop it up and then move on to greener pastures and even greener cocktails, right? No, maybe. I don't know. Do we want our cocktails to be green? I'll just put Midori in all of it. That's the joke. All right. And I'll go grab myself another one of those little rubber bar mats. And we will continue with the rest of the fun. Which cocktails are you making this summer? Actually, I'll pose the question to the crowd now. If you had to think of a summer cocktail, or even just a cocktail that you've drank in the summer before that reminds you of those summer days, possibly in the past, or perhaps evoking feelings of the future, let me know. I'm curious to see what your thoughts are. Pina Colada was my choice from this particular one. I'm injecting a little bit of myself in everything that we do, because it makes sense, because we are... Human! You guessed it. Human. That's what makes us human. All right. And let me give this a little cleanup back here. We're moving on from Sweet Liberty's Pina Colada and doing something completely different. Going back to the track that is trying the top five cocktails of the summer of 23. So far, we've been through an improved version of the normal Pina Colada that in addition to just regular, you know, pineapple coconut stuff, includes sherry as a float ingredient up on top that kind of rounds things out from a very fruity perspective as well as adds a slight bit of bitterness and a slight change of texture by adding coffee beans to the blender that we use when we make it if you had a better blender it would probably make things a little bit more combined together which is great but even if you have like a little hamilton beach or like a cheap blender too it works so you can combine those together we also tried out this mezcal drink this mezcal uh, the mezcal based paloma called the paloma negra using cold brew liqueur and it's supposed to evoke this idea that mezcal it's making its way to the masses and mezcal is going to be all across cocktail menus as being a part of the summer repertoire um i don't know of any particular recipes so i can we use that one as a kind of see if it evokes the feeling of summer of 23 being that canada is on fire it fits 
in its own special way. And then we tried this, apparently this other latest summer TikTok viral combination trend, which is espresso and tonic water. We spiked it with a little bit of gin at the end, and it's actually super pleasant. I love the way that that tastes, and I am a big fan of it so far. This now that I know that you can make it without alcohol and stuff, and it's a proper morning libation, I'll probably do more of this. I'll grab more tonic water so I can have that in the morning because it sounds delicious. Um, I don't think it's a summer thing for me though. That's just gonna be like an all year round thing because I drink coffee. Rye saying that they grew up in Louisiana, so we had trash can hurricanes. Hurricane is another great idea. Last, uh, um, what was it? I go on vacation with my family. We've been over that. There's a place, and I don't remember what it's called. Oh, it's called the Frosty Frog. It's called the Frosty Frog. I love the Frosty Frog. And they do boozy, boozy shakes. And one of their options was a uh, an Everclear Hurricane. And who, dude, Everclear Hurricanes, they are, they get you ready for the rest of the day, the night, the, the more, it doesn't really matter what time of day it is. It gets you like, like a hurricane. Gotcha. Anyway, but we'll move on with something else. Move on to a different cocktail. It was actually interesting. As I was doing research for what, like, the whole top, like, cocktail of the summer is supposed to be, the prevailing, like, recommendation for something that is sweet, bright, and cools you off are spritzes. There are spritzes of many kind, among the more popular ones being the Aperol spritz, which I plan on trying last to see if things kind of prop up there. Do some shoulder squeezes. Hey, oh, Harry. Do some shoulder squeezes as we get into this. It's good. Breathing technique. We should learn how to slow down. But the other piece of that is there's a spritz that's been going around now. It is an, it's called, it's many, it's called by many names. It is the elderflower spritz. It is the Hugo spritz. It is the Saint Germain, the Saint Germain spritz. It is an elderflower spritz, which comes in apparently a bunch of different combos, which we'll get into trying all three of those combos now. It's all just one drink. It makes many, it takes many forms. It's interesting that at its base, what you are combining together is you're combining elderflower liqueur, with something sparkling, whether that be Prosecco, whether that be sparkling water, whether that be club soda, whether that be champagne, and you're combining that with something else, that kind of a diluting agent, the soda water in this case. I misspoke. The first, the second option there is gonna be something alcoholic and sparkling, like a dry champagne or a Prosecco. And then, uh, that's, that's kind of it. That's all you add to it. You can add other sweetening agents. You can s add gin to that. You can put lemon juice in that. There's a couple of different forms that this seems to take on, but in three different locations, I was able to find delish.com all over TikTok. TikTok. We also have the Home Cocktail Club, evidently. All are giving their own iterations of what the Hugo St. Germain Elderflower Spritz is supposed to be, and apparently nobody can come to a conclusion. So we're going to try all three of them, and we're going to see which one works, at least from my perspective. Uh, that's the whole point of things. It's to be able to explore this stuff. Rye says, I used to order a bowl of atomic cherries, cherries that have been soaked for at least 24 hours and never clear. That is an entire bowl of that stuff. Dude, this is wild. I've got some, um, the, the cherries that I pulled out because I apparently teased myself with the other maraschino cherries I have were sitting in moonshine. They're currently sitting in moonshine, and they've been sitting in moonshine for a very long time. Uh, I'd reach for that cherry. Oh, actually, I'm going to reach for that cherry because I see it's at the bottom of my pina colada there, and I don't want that cherry to go to waste because it was a gift from a friend. That's <laughs> so good. Oh, it's so good. It is just... That is so boozy. Oh my goodness, I love it. Anyway, this next cocktail, in its many different forms, is an elderflower spritz. It utilizes elderflower. We're just going to be direct about it. Oh my god, that cherry is giving me the... making me feel all bubbly inside. I did that backwards. <laughs> I did the spritz backwards. There we go. All right. The elderflower spritz, aka the Hugo spritz, or the Saint Germain spritz, or the Bowles spritz, or whatever you want to call it. It depends on, like, if it's a Saint Germain spritz, it's probably going to use Saint Germain and elderflower liqueur, which I did see at the store today, but I'm trying to figure out, instead of going for the obvious choice, 
I went for a different choice. I happen to have bowls as my de facto elderflower liqueur, but I was able to find this bottle of St. Elder, which is another natural elderflower liqueur at the store, and I wanted to try this one for my Hugo spritzes because the bowls just seems like the cheap option, and it is the lowest tier option that I have at my particular liquor store, and this is like a level up from there. No more difference than like three or four bucks or so, but I wanna see how this one compares to this one, which I've been using for quite a while. I know what this guy tastes like. I've used it in many cocktails already. I'm gonna know what the other guys taste like. Evidently, St. Elder was rated 94 points. St. Elder is a handcrafted in small, is handcrafted in small batches from a natural extract of fresh elderflower blossoms. The result is a finely balanced, versatile liqueur that easily pairs with a variety of spirits, wines, and beers to liven up any classic cocktail. For example, the Hugo Spritz, or the St. Elder Spritz, or the Elderflower Spritz, or the St. Germain Spritz. It's really whatever you want it to be. Just call it how it is elderflower in a glass and it comes in three different forms i have three different recipes that we're going to try for this it is going to basically see whether or not we can figure out the best of those three recipes and also see if whether or not we can even even with those three recipes can we call an elderflower hugo whatever spritz the top cocktail recommendation of the summer i have no freaking clue but we're gonna try to find out anyways so every single one is let me go through over my instructions over here the first one, which comes from delish.com, is filling a glass with ice and adding everything, stir to chill, top with wine, soda water. That's all. You build it right in the glass. From the TikTok video, specifically Colette's Cocktails, which I found referenced on... Uh, I think that was also on delish.com, or that might have come from one of the other websites. I apparently didn't write a source down for that one. Um, but that is adding everything. You muddle some lemon juice and mint leaves in your glass first, then add ice, add in your St. Germain elderflower liqueur, fill it all up. Again, totally built in the glass. And then, same thing. Everything has to infuse. Actually, this one is add everything to infuse, allowing a mixture for one or two minutes. This is from the Home Cocktail Club. And then fill it with ice. First, scrunch the mint in your hands and bruise it slightly. We're gonna make that last one first, because apparently we have to let things infuse for a little bit before we drink it. Um, and then we'll go. We'll, we'll do each each one in its own regard. And we're all gonna try to put it in similar glasses. That's what we're gonna try to do. Okay, it's called, oh, what was I, uh, it's called for me, says Rye. Have a great night, drive safe everyone. And remember, call a cab, there is no shame in surviving that legally required public service announcement. You have a wonderful night out there, Rye. And yeah, to anybody who's making their way home from the bar with the next via car this evening, I'm confused. How'd you do it? Are you watching this in the car? Are you drinking in the car? <gasps> for shame! Is the car driving? Are, is it? Is this the car even functioning? I have questions for you, but you're not under any obligation to answer them. So let's move on to the cocktail. So that's what we're going to do. I'm gonna grab, you would use wine glasses for this, but I don't think I actually have three similar wine glasses that we would use all of this in. So, hmm, how are we gonna do that? I think what I'm going to do but it feels so appropriate to use these. Actually, you know what? I know what I'm going to do. I do have a bunch of very similar wine glasses downstairs. They're not like the bold wine glasses, but I feel like this is the perfect excuse to finally go take them out. So actually, I will return again in a little bit to go to the, the basement down below to grab three equivalent wine glasses. They're not the big ones like I had planned for, but I wanted to do this all similarly. So we're going to go with that one. And we'll be back in just a hot second. And I'm also going to grab more paper towels. Just in case we make a mess. Because one never knows when you're making a mess. Where are you? Oh my god! I almost got a big towel! Oh okay. yeah. Don't break the glass. Don't break the glass. Don't break the glass. Breaking glass is not so fun. So far we're doing great, but alas, I'm not gonna make that call until I get to the bar, because otherwise it'd be even funnier. Anyways, we're back. I have returned. There is one wine glass, two wine glass, three wine glass. This is how we're gonna do it, and a big old thing of paper towels, because we're trying to remain clean around here. Keep ourselves clean, folks. So we have three different glasses for three different elderflower hugo saint germain saint elder spritz is excuse me i'm very burpy today I should drink more water maybe that'll help
Very good. Hydrate, my friends. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to start off with all these different instructions. Iteration number one says we have to fill the Collins glass with ice and add our elderflower core to stir and chill, top with wine, soda water, and stir gently. Garnish with celery and cucumber. There is absolutely no mint in this one. This recipe comes from delish.com. I do have a little bit of cucumber. I do have a little bit of celery. So I'm gonna take those out and prepare our garnishes. This one is going to be filled up rather quickly. Um, we're just gonna kind of let it go there. The second one requires adding lemon juice and mint leaves first before any ice. We'll add all the ice in on their own um and so the third one is we scratch mint in our hands bruise it slightly place it in the bottom large wine glass or other wine glass add the elderflower cordial calls for a cordial uh and it calls for gin gin allowing it to infuse for one to two minutes there is no ice in that yet so we'll add the ice at the end next fill it with ice so it seems like this one's gonna get we're gonna use mint elderflower cordial and gin and let that infuse for a little bit this one is going to get lemon juice and mint, and this one is just, it's not gonna get anything yet. Not until we add the ice. We add the ice first, but that, that's what we'll do. So let me go grab our mint. Let me go grab the cucumber, the celery, and everything else that we got for garnish. And I'm gonna need a lemon, lemon juicing. I have lemons. These were pre-cut. We were using them earlier this week. That's what we all got back here. So step number one. For this guy over here is we're gonna we're gonna grab some mint. I'm gonna scrunch it in my hands. That's what we're gonna do. Scrunch the mint in my hands. I have three sprigs of I got three sprigs of mint left, and two of these are about the same size. So first, I'll take this mint, and just as the instructions say, I'm gonna scrunch it in our hands. I'm gonna try to bruise it ever so slightly, just by giving a little bit of a squeeze. It doesn't call for specifically a mint sprig. I can really smell that being expressed now. So I squeezed it, I'm gonna peel, peel these stalks and drop them into the bottom of our glass. There's quite a number of it in there, but it's chill. Not the stalks, don't need the stalks in there. There we go. Couple bit more, couple bit more, there we go. So there's a good number of mint in there. Just to make sure things are a little bit more combined together, I'm gonna grab my muddler ever so slightly, and just kind of push things in to compress things just a little bit, very, very gently. So that is that. Next, what we're going to do is we also need to add mint leaves to our middle glass here. This one is going to be combined with elderflower cordial, which does not actually, I guess this is elderflower cordial. Cordial can be alcoholic. I think cordials don't necessarily have to be alcoholic, but this is our elderflower cordial for the purposes of this. I also bought elderflower tonic water just in case. I don't think that's necessary here. So we'll take a little bit less. We're not gonna, we're not gonna bruise these things ahead of time. We're just gonna put it in there and bruise it in the glass ever so slightly. Also, these are really large pieces of mint, so very proud of this mint plant for what it's provided for us. Thanks, mint plant. You're welcome, mint plant. Validation, praise. And now we are going to muddle that very lightly with some lemon juice, specifically a half an ounce of lemon juice. So I'll grab my squeezer for my lemon juice, for my lemon. Grab a measure and majigger. There we go. Half an ounce of that lemon. I'll put this elsewhere because I want to preserve that for later. We might need more of that later. We'll pour the lemon juice only in our spritz number two. We haven't muddled things yet, but we are going to muddle things now. And it doesn't say to be necessarily gently to this, so we're just gonna like I'm just gonna go for it. Just do a little bit of a, a little bit of our muddling action there. Actually, here's an idea. I never actually tried this before with a big lineup like this. I'm actually gonna take the cocktail angle. I'm gonna try to see if we can set this up in such a way that we can watch all of these cocktails being made at the same time. I have to do a little bit of angling magic here. We'll see. That's not so bad, not so bad. Let's get you here, get you here. We'll put you right here, yeah. That's not too bad. I think that's not too bad. So this is the one... Oh, these are a little... Uh, meet these uh, containers are a little dusty. They've been downstairs for a little while. But they're going to be getting some use now. So we're muddling these mint leaves with lemon juice. The lemon juice is going to be infused with the flavor of the mint. This guy over here is going to be combined with our elderflower liqueur, our cordial, and our gin. Specifically, this one is measured in milliliters. It's starting off with about 20 milliliters of elderflower cordial, which is going to be just about two-thirds of an ounce. So we'll add, we'll add that. 
Fresh bottle of St. Elder. Lovely. Oh, that smells so fragrant. Oh, I cannot wait to see how that tastes in there. Great. So like two thirds of an ounce of our cordial. A little bit over a half, somewhere in between. There we go. And we also need to add to that 25 milliliters. That's that's like, that's almost, that's almost a full ounce. So we'll do almost a full ounce of gin. The gin that I have accessible to me this evening doesn't say exactly what kind, but I'm gonna use Beef Eater because that's what we've got accessible. That's why I actually completely reorganized the bar. So we have well spirits now. And this is the gin that I have effectively on well. We'll add pretty much almost an ounce of our gin in there. And we're just gonna let that sit. We're not gonna touch it anymore. According to the recipe from the Home Cocktail Club, we're just gonna let that sit for the next one to two minutes while we begin to add ice from this side over to this side because everything does wind up getting ice to it, right? Fill the glass, fill with ice. Next one is add ice, then add the elderflower. And the first one is add the ice, then add the elderflower. So let's grab ourselves some ice. I got quite a few different pieces of ice and stuff over here. I think what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna grab our large ice cubes and I'll get a, I'm gonna give them a crack over our loose bag and we're gonna add like little little chippies, little chippies of ice in there. Cause I feel like that feels appropriate here. Um, I'm not usually one for, I still haven't quite cracked the code that is, uh, no pun intended, crack, I mean, cracking ice cubes and stuff. Crack the code that is cracking ice like in your hand and stuff. Um, I'm still working on that. I'm a very self, I'm a novice over here and I'm fully admitting to that, but a lot of people are. Let's go and grab my little Lewis bag over here just so I can kind of conserve my mess and make sure it doesn't go too, too far. Just kind of grab our ice cubes here. And I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a tap. The bar spoons that I have readily available are not really the heavy ones, but this one's got like a big old bulb and stuff on the end. And I don't know whether that's necessarily used for cracking ice and stuff, but we'll give it a best shot. Nah, that's not really doing it. Gotta use the spoon side. There we go. Crack a little bit of ice. Make it accessible. Oh, that was actually pretty good. Not bad, Cam. Yeah, I'm getting better over here. Maybe not the best best, but that's what we got. There we go. I got you, man. There we go. That's 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 cracked enough. I'll take that. I will take that as a win for the day. All right, so we'll add our ice. We'll add a bit of ice over here. Again, I'm getting my grubby little hands all over this ice. I understand that. This is this is my bar. Nobody else is drinking this but me. But if you were serving this out to other people, hey, you know, you might you want to be a little more, a little more cordial, I suppose. We'll put bigger ice cubes over there and kind of evenly split the little pieces that we have over here. There's going to be a bit more dilution there, but that's just how it be. And I got one more big ice cube left, so I'm gonna, it's just water, so we're gonna put that down there. Put the rest of our ice cubes over there as well. We don't need any more of them for now. All right, so now that we've added our ice, this is going to inf continue infusing. It's been more than one to two minutes. That's just, just because we talk really long. We take our time around here. This has been infusing with the lemon juice. Now that this is infusing with our cordial and stuff, we'll let that be for a little while. From this side, now we're going to pour our full, two full ounces, or about 59 milliliters of our elderflower liqueur over top of this ice. That's going to use my other side of my measuring majigger. Again, that's about 59-ish milliliters. If you're measuring just with respect to milliliters, it might just be 50. We'll pour that right over top. Trying to get, to get that very, very chilled. This one noticeably has more ounces than the other guys. Also, this is a smaller container, so I might have mismeasured things because this is definitely not for a glass of this size. But we are going to make it work anyway. If we have to upgrade our glass size, that's what we'll do. We'll upgrade our glass size. Next, we're going to add the desired amount of ice over here, and we're going to add our elderflower liqueur to this middle guy as well, which is going to use, in this case, only three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters. Flip that around. Get to that three-quarter mark, and we'll pop that in there. That's more or less a complete cocktail at this point. Got a very, got a nice color to it so far. I like, I like how this has a nice, like, light yellow tone to it without anything else added to it. But when it gets cold with the lemon juice and stuff in the pulp, it gets a little cloudy. And then on the other side, we've already added our elderflower liqueur and our gin. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pour in our soda water and our prosecco. I don't have prosecco. Instead, I bought some champagne because there's champagne being used tonight. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pop this guy off because that just feels fun. I just gotta open it. I gotta get this thing open. There's a little tab here, I think. There we go. I can kind of peel this thing back as best as I can. 
This was from Giant. Giant Foods. Giant Foods indeed. Oh, it says to twist. All you need to do is twist? Really? Somehow I doubt that. It says twist and pop. Release, twist, and pop. Alrighty then. Here we go. There we go. Awesome, dude. Now we'll add our champagne and soda water. Let me grab our soda water, too. I need another container of that. I have one over here. We'll see if we have enough. To this guy, all the way at the end, we are adding 25 milliliters of soda water, just about an ounce, and then 120 milliliters of Prosecco. We're just filling the whole thing back up with Prosecco. So about an ounce of our solar, uh, solar water. Nice. Soda water. Almost an ounce. Shy of an ounce. And then we'll fill it off with our with our champagne. I love how bubbly that's getting. I love that. It's okay that we spill it a little bit. We're honest about ourselves around here. I'm a little bit of a mess on the inside and on the outside sometimes, as evidenced by the streams sometimes. In the middle glass over here, we added our Saint Germain. We're gonna fill the rest of the glass up with Prosecco. That's all. Prosecco or champagne. There is no club soda in this one. Just a bunch of wine. Oh, hello there. Hello there. Hello. You want to calm down just a little bit? Just a little bit. We're going to have room for garnish over here, too. This one over here gets garnished with, like, uh, citrus wedges and stuff. This one in the middle gets garnished with mint leaves, some lemon slices, if you happen to have them. We'll do the garnishes at the very end, naturally. This one over here, now that it's been combined together and sitting and getting cool and whatnot, we're going to top it with wine and our soda water, specifically three ounces of our sparkling wine, and then we top that with the soda water. So let's see exactly how much I can put in there. We might need to upgrade to a bigger glass. Maybe not. We'll see. That's a bubbly two ounces. We'll add a bubbly one more ounce. Actually, I think this is going to work out perfectly. And then we'll add the rest of the remainder of our soda water. Is it exactly two ounces? I'm very curious now. Oh, there we go. That is absolutely perfect. Oh, I love when things work. It is so... I wish I could convey how lovely, how just, how pleasant it smells over here right now. It is so nice. It's very floral. It's very elderflowery, naturally. That's where the flower comes from, an elderflower. The elder part... I don't know. Maybe with some old dude. All right, next. So that was pretty much it. That was pretty much all we had. We combined all of our... We have our elderflower liqueur. We have our sparkling wine, our soda water, our ice. We need the garnish. Over here, we have our lemon juice, our elderflower liqueur, our mint leaves, our Prosecco, our champagne. We're all good there. Over here, we also added everything as well. Our elderflower cordial, our gin, our soda water, and our Prosecco. So there's a slight difference between each of these variations here. And um, now we'll garnish them appropriately according to uh, each of their original instructions. As I put this top back on this bottle of... Uh, champagne over here which is great i love that it's resealable that's great that makes things so easy for me i love it very much so this guy over here gets garnished with some celery and cucumber i got a little bit of celery left over from dinner the other day we're just merely going to uh just gonna cop a couple of uh pieces of that off if you had a straighter stalk of the celery it'd probably work out kind of well there i love the more leafy parts of it so we're going to use that as a means to kind of pop that in from the back and give it a little bit of a kind of very, very, very vegetal feel to it. And we also need to garnish it with, specifically says a cucumber. So when I think of garnishing with a cucumber, I'm merely going to slice along it to get a long thing of cucumber. Essentially, I'm just gonna cut it at an angle this way, and then do two thin slices. Usually I'd put this on the angle, but uh, evidently we're already on the angle and it's a little difficult to see. But so I cut it down this way. We have all this to work with. And now we're just going to simply cut it down the other direction so we can get a long, thin-ish slice of our cucumber. This could probably be even more thin. So let's make it a little bit more thin. Oh, I cut the whole thing off completely. That's all right. That was the idea, at least. I'm going to put this kind of in the back as a means to kind of line up with that wall over there. If there was more ice, it would probably work a little bit better. But we're a little full on this one over here. That's how it is just going to be. Also, you got a cucumber snack for yourself later. Hmm. So bright. I love the way that tastes. I'll get to the rest of that later when I start snacking. The one in the middle calls for uh, mint leaves and a lemon slice if you got it. I do have a lemon slice. 
my uh, my cutting board is completely wrecked right now so i'm just going to use what i have left of my thing over here i'm going to take the ugly part of the lemon kind of move it off a little bit and i'm also going to take the sticker off this time now we'll go through give it a little bit of a cut this one's a little soft it's been lightly used and i'll only do half of the lemon we don't need anything more in there i think for now there's a lot going on a lot going on here oh come on my love my love oh this lemon peach wedge just doesn't wanna all right do a little lemon lemon wedge pop these guys off near the other pieces of lemon that i had and we're also going to use the rest of our mint which i think i put over here this is very this is very sad mint i bought it from the store i've been trying to grow fresh mint and it just kind of hasn't been working so this is just how we are over here we'll use the rest of the mint that we have over here um oh actually the third one also requires mint and, and citrus wedge as well. So I'll kind of evenly split it between the two. There's already a bunch of mint on there, but we'll add a little bit more. And um, we'll do another little citrus piece. I think actually I'm gonna... No, I got the lemon. I got the lemon. We'll add one more lemon over to the other one. I, got, I can use a little bit of a kind of a, a tiny kind of a wedge, but also not kind of a wedge. It's a wedge. The wedge in the way that it be. And I'll try to scooch this over so we can actually see that wedge over here it's interesting how the mint like really wants to rise to the top we still need it as a garnish i will top it off with the absolute king that we know that mint to be all right and this was it these are three different ways to make an elder flower elder flower spritz or the Hugo Spritz, or the St. Germain Spritz. It really depends on what you use in it, I guess, but at its base, they all use elderflower something. So I think that's worth celebrating. This is great. I, for my own reference, I'm gonna pop a little photo of this for everyone. I will use that in the blog later on. These are, it's a lovely little, like, display here, and I love that. And so now what we'll do is I'll uh, get some angles for myself as well. I'll turn these guys around, and then we'll proceed to try these guys. We'll also review exactly what's different about each of these so far because they all are slightly different. I actually love the way that the, uh, the cucumber looks in this one all the way on your left. I'll take pictures of all of them. A little cloudy on that one. Very spritzy. And then together, we have the whole, we have the whole trifecta. All the different Hugo spritzes. That's so cute. All right, let's switch things up a little bit. Pop things over here and give this a taste all of them. Just a reminder, this one over here, which was our first recipe, which came from delish.com, that one, distinctly from the other ones, does not use lemon juice and it does not use gin. This is merely elderflower liqueur, sparkling wine, soda water. That's it. Very, very basic. Excuse me. And it also filled it up to the brim. So we'll see how this guy tastes over here and how it smells first. Very powerful, actually very light. I take that back a little bit. I say powerful because it was the most prevalent, but it is very light on those elderflower notes. It's very pleasant to sniff. There is a slight kind of refrigerator component coming from the celery because it was sitting in the refrigerator for a little while. We had it for dinner tonight and this was what was left over. So we're utilizing what we have. Mmm. That is so light. It is super duper light. This is almost like, you You could tell me that this is just elderflower water, and I believe you. This actually reminds me, when I was over, when I was overseas, I did a little trip to Europe. It was not, no longer than like 12 to 13 days or so. I did a little bit of singing trips around a couple of different countries over there. And on the day that we were in Austria, and we hiked up the Alps that day, at the very bottom, we went into one of the local convenience stores and they were selling elder elderflower Fanta, the Fanta, Fanta beverage. Over there, it's a little bit different. They called it Fanta. Not Fanta, because apparently the sugars and stuff are a little different. I don't think high fructose corn syrup, but don't quote me. This was years ago. This reminds me of the way that that, can that canned bottle of soda tasted, but a little less intense. It actually, it, as soon as I took a sip of that, it brought me back to those alpine days. It was very pleasant. That was a little convenience store. We also bought uh, carbonated water down there, and by the time we got all the way up to the top, completely decarbonated because of the altitude difference. It was awesome. This is also very like gardeny, and there's a very distinct sweetness there. I'm actually, I think there's getting there's a very nice combo component of the more citrusy, more weeded, kind of more of the sweeter, just dryish components coming from the champagne in there that kind of melds very well with that quasi sweetness, very floral, extremely floral notes of the elderflower. Personally. 
I like this one the best so far because it's the only one we've tried. Move on to the next one, which specifically includes lemon juice, which the other variations do not include. This one has lemon juice, elderflower liqueur, and Prosecco, champagne, whichever you want to use. If you're more of a Prosecco type of person, you could probably use that. For me, of the express Proseccos I've tried, not a big fan of most of them. So I opted for the champagne. And so far, I'm very happy with that. This one here, notably heavier on the mint notes there because there's a blot of mint in there. Note, there was no mint in this first one. There's absolutely no mint to be spoken of. You could probably garnish it with a way that you want to, but at least for this recipe does not make any mention of it. Over here, there are those very, very light floral notes from the elderflower. It's very, the mint is very much in your face, which makes sense because we muddled it with the lemon juice, we've expressed all those oils, and it's all floated up to the top. Makes a lot of sense. Notably, more sour than the first iteration, but not overpoweringly so. This is very, there is a very obvious lemon note. There is a very op obvious mint note. And there is also that very light note of elderflower in the background. Whereas in this version over here, the elderflower takes the front seat. Over here, it's taking the back seat a little bit as a supporting character, which really holds up the mint and tempers out the sourness from that lemon juice. As far as lemon juice cocktails go, this is really good. I think it's rather balanced. It could probably be a little bit more sweet by, at least for my preferences, adding a bit more of the elderflower in the core to it. But overall, it's nice. It reminds me of very pleasant sours that I've had in the past. But this is a lot less powerful on the flavor, which I'm guessing is because we put a bunch of champagne in it, which naturally bubbles things and kind of mellows out those other notes there. Notably, not club soda. So it's not like we're diluting the flavors completely. We're diluting some flavors by adding other flavors into the mix. Those more other notes of fruit. Not necessarily the floral notes of the elderflower, but the more citrusy and stone fruit notes that I'm getting from the champagne. I'm gonna take another sip of that one too. I think what really does it for me on this one is the mint. I'm actually kind of sad I'm missing, I'm melancholy that the first one did not have any mint in it. Again, you could fix that by just adding the mint there. But according to these recipes, that's what we'll follow. This one over here was from it was from the whole co the home cocktail club, specifically calling this one the Hugo Spritz. And this one notably has gin in it. These other spear these other ones over here do, do not have any hard liquor in them. This one notably has um about a sh this one says a shot of gin is 25 milliliters, and I I disagree with that. To me, a shot is one and a half ounces, which is about 44 milliliters, so that's like half a shot. But everyone's got their own references and stuff. It would also make a bigger cocktail if we did it by that ratio. Um, but this one has the gin, elderflower, soda water, champagne. It combines everything from these other pieces. You've got your club soda, you've got your elderflower, you've also got gin. You've completely cut out the lemon juice. There's not going to be a sour component here, at least not a very obvious one. On the nose, it's more minty than this guy is. And I think it's because this mint was expressed in a different, it might be because it was expressed in a different way. Instead of the mint oils over here being muddled in with the lemon juice, which coalesced with the mint oils that were being released, over here, I kind of squished it into my hand first, letting it being open to the world before and kind of letting it sit there for a little bit. Um, so it's, I think the air around it is a little more minty. It also has less, it has no lemon juice in it. So whereas I was probably getting some tempering from the lemon juice over here, this is unadulterated. It is open to the air. For the elderflower notes to combine with the uh, with the mint notes there, and I do get a little bit of the elderflower. It's still very muted because the mint is right in my face, but hmm, how much of the I had a lot had a lot more champagne in there. That is a much more champagne heavy version of all these guys. I think for the most part, this is very elderflower, slightly mint and champagne. And then by that, it's very, it's got a dry characteristic to it. There's a slightly floral note to it from, from the elderflower with that sweetness that it provides being that it is a liqueur. Um, but it's mostly more those dry or drier stone fruity notes from the champagne. It's kind of like, this one's kind of like drinking an altered glass of champagne. This one, the middle is kind of tasting like a, like a sour-ish, it's like a lemonade, I would say. Uh, more specifically. This is kind of like a minty lemonade with a different type of sweetness to it. And over here, it's it's garden. It's floral. It's vegetal. It's it's floral. I, I, I like this one, I think, the best. I think the first one over here is my, is my favorite there. And I'm going to go back through each of them, too, to pick out some more characteristics compared to the other ones as well. So I guess starting back... Nah, we'll go back to the first one first.
It is mildly sweet. It is elderflower. It is slightly champagne. It is just diluted enough to have all the combinate, all the pieces there. I would add mint to that because I like the minty components. I think that's that's something that's missing from this one. Over here, very lemon forward, but tempered by the other components in there. Rather minty, very prominently minty there. I think it could probably use more sweetness, at least for me. More elderflower liqueur would be the way that I would drink this, at least if it was my form of a spritz. And then over here, it's boozy, it's a little bit of minty. It's very champagne heavy, and probably those notes from the uh, beef eater gin as well. It's floral like the elderflower, but it's in a different way. As opposed to being more a sweet floral like the elderflower is, it's an herbal kind of botanical and bitter-ish kind of herbal uh, botanical over there instead. Overall, a bitter kind of floral. Whatever I was saying there, getting a little lost in my my uh, descriptions here. I'm gonna drink a little bit more water. Very good. All right. So that was our elderflower spritz in three different forms, according to three different sources. We can just call one of them a Hugo spritz, one of them a St. Elder spritz, and then one of them an elderflower spritz, and then just call it that. Which one is which is up to your interpretation. I'm not going to give it. I wouldn't need to give labels over here. That's not the point of it. We're just trying to enjoy our drinks and stuff. We're not trying to label drinks and or people and stuff. Although I am trying to figure out which of these cocktails is evidently the one to be using for the summer. So far, I still really like that espresso tonic. I really, really like espresso so far. The pina colada is a nice variation, but it required a bit of work. I mean, it really depends on what situation you find yourself in, right? Um, the mezcal one, I don't know. Canada's on fire. That's about all I got for it. It tastes pretty good, though. Palomas are nice. Grapefruit, grapefruit juice is nice. Uh, but if I had to pick one of these ones, it would be this recipe here. The one that came from delish.com. This one was delish, but I'd modify it by adding some mint there. Instead of, I guess, instead of using celery and cucumber rose garnish, I'd probably put mint in there because it just, it feels better. It feels brighter. It feels more that garden characteristic that I would go for if I were drinking this during the summer. And mint isn't super difficult to get your hands on. The hard part here is getting yourself a bottle of St. Germain or some elderflower liqueur, but this is more, I mean, I've seen elderflower liqueurs at every liquor store that I've been to. Um, I don't think I've had a hard time finding that stuff, so it's pretty easy to get your hands on. At least where I am. I know nothing of what your scenario is, so it might be a little bit different for you. But I'll take these guys, and I'll put them kind of back to the side somewhere, because there's one more cocktail that I want to cover this evening as we try to kind of go through the top cocktails for the summer of 23, and that's just taking it back to where we were previously. I think the cocktail that seems to distinguish itself as the summer drink almost every single year for at least a good number of people is another spritz called an Aperol spritz, which I've never actually, I've never had an Aperol spritz. So I figured that this was the perfect opportunity to kind of compare a classic summer drink with some of the, the, I guess, the up-and-coming ones, the more tabloidy ones, the ones that are more so in the media and stuff these days. Um, at least that's my interpretation of it. But I've never actually had an Aperol Spritz before, and uh, I've been told that Aperol Spritzes are absolutely delightful, but I've never actually had one, so this is the perfect opportunity to give it a try. Let me do a little bit uh, more cleanup over here. Just gonna do a little bit of uh, clean and resetting on the board, and we'll see what happens. That was actually very quick. I like that. Let's see. The recipe I have for an Aperol spritz I got from liquor.com. Liquor.com says it's an Italian it's an Italian drink. The Italians love this stuff apparently. Aperol or Campari came from Italy. They kind of like that bitter orange flavor to it. And uh, actually, I don't know too much about Aperol because I don't think I've ever actually cracked open this bottle. This is a totally new bottle of Aperol because I've never made I've personally never made anything with this before, but it feels like Feels like you need to. It's an aperitivo since 1990 from F L L I Barbieri. It's a product of Italy. Apparently, Campari and Aperol are both Italian things. It pays to look at the bottle. They're saying here the Aperol Spritz per perfect color. No, oh my God! There's actually oh, there's a recipe. There's a QR code on the back of this bottle. Oh, oh why am I using Liquor.com? I should be taking the thing from the back of the bottle. Hold up a second. This changes things completely. This next cocktail, I'm trying my first Aperol Spritz and seeing if it beats out all of these other cocktails here, which everyone else is saying is gonna be the one. We'll see if it's the one. We'll see. Aperol Spritz. Sometimes, maybe sometimes a classic is the way to go. I don't know. This is my attempted 
unbiased opinion because I've never had an Aperol spritz before. I've had Aperol spritzes or spritzes that used Aperol before, but they were like from bars and stuff. And I don't think I specifically, it's not the, at the very least, it wasn't the Aperol recipe for how to make their own Aperol spritz. So I gotta give a try of this guy. Let me grab my QR code scanner out. Copy text, no, I'd rather, uh-oh, uh-oh. No, it's not, it's not that one. I want the QR code, I want the QR code. There we go. Aspritz.com. Aperol.com. English. Aperol. This website uses cookies. Sure, dude. You can use my cookies. What is my date of birth? I'll tell you what my date of birth is, and then you will let me provide. I accidentally entered that incorrectly, but it's it's chill. It's fine. The Aperol Spritz, according to Aperol1999.com. The original recipe. Join the Aperol Spritz community. No, I don't want to. Not yet, at least. You gotta show me what your product can do. What we have to do is we have to utilize Prosecco, specifically. I may have some more Prosecco. I have champagne and my God, I'm going to use it. But if I happen to have any Prosecco, maybe we gotta do the cooking by the book. Nope, there's no more Prosecco at the bar of next. We're winding things down as we proceed to vacation mode around here. So we're gonna use champagne in place of that. Two parts of Aperol, a splash of soda. I'm sure they probably mean soda like the water and a slide of orange. Rest, rest, prep, prep, boo, preparation. One, recipe. Two, place ice cubes in a stemmed balloon glass. Pour three parts of Prosecco, followed by pouring two parts of Aperol and one ounce of soda. Slide an orange and use as a garnish. It sounds so simple, let's give it a try. I have a big wine glass over here that I planned on using for at least one of these cocktails. I was gonna use it for the little Hugo spritzes, but evidently, I'm using this for the Aperol spritz. Feels appropriate. So, the first thing that we'll do is we'll grab ourselves some ice. We gotta put that in the glass. Hello, big old bottle of Aperol. Hello, uh, it's a glass of wine. That's what these things are. Huh. Hello there, oh, hello, oh, hello. There we go, that seems very straight part of the gra glass. There we go. Come back, recipe. I lost you. This boy doesn't know how to make an Aperol spritz. He must be silly. Place ice cubes in a stemmed balloon glass. This glass is the most balloon glass that I have. I'm going to try cracking some more ice cubes. That went oddly well earlier. I'm going to give this another try. Zoom, zoom, zoom. So goes the motorcycles outside. All right, let's give these things a good little bit of a crack. There's probably a way to do this better, but I don't got it. There we go, a little bit of ice in there. I feel like I need more. Oh, that's that's the way to do it. You gotta. It's about using the fulcrum, the full length of the lever arm of the spoon. I was giving it a little too close. I forgot my physics lesson. All right, let's try this one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try to do it in two or three cracks. I'm gonna try it. Maybe not, but well, I had big two. The two big glass parts of the ice fell down, and then one more. There we go. That's that's icy. Ah, my fingy, my fingy. I'm trying not to break the actual glass itself. That would be silly. And now you got a glass that's. Full of ice, big old glass filled with big old ice. That's just how it is. We need three parts of prosecco or champagne. I don't exactly know how much this thing holds, so I'm just going to wing it. But I'll do in bases of two ounces. I think that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to wing it by doing two ounces of the stuff. I probably won't drink the entire thing, but we'll we'll give this our best shot. So I will add, let's say, I'm going to add three full ounces and then see where that gets us. I'm trying to measure out champagne. Doesn't really work super well, but damn it, you know what? We try our best to surround here. We'll try three ounces first of our champagne. And if I pour it a little bit slower, it comes out better. I see three full ounces and I'm down with it. We have three more parts to go, so I think that's probably gonna work out. So it looks like our base of unit is going to be single ounce or about 30 milliliters, just about. Next we'll add two parts, or in this case, two milliliters of our Aperol. Fresh bottle. Oh, that smells so orangey. Oh my God, it is so orangey. This smells so pleasant. Wow. I need two full ounces, so we'll go to the other side of the measuring jigger. Mm. 
There we go. Now it says on the back of the bottle. Oh, actually, I'm not finished with it yet. Then we need one part of our soda, our soda water, which do I have a full ounce of this left? Let's see. Did I get as much leverage as possible out of this bottle of soda? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Just pour the rest of it in there. There we go. Oh, that's perfect. I love when things work out so well like that. There we go. This is an Aperol Spritz. We just need to add a garnish. I'll take this lemon over this lemon. It's an orange. You forget yourself, Cameron. You forget. Where did I put the There's knife? Silly me. I'm going to put a little orange slice in here. We'll go right down the side. I'm definitely not doing this the way that God intended me to do it. But really, does God intend us to do anything? Honestly, I don't really know. We'll slice down the center. Put a little wedge in there. It's not the exact orange rind that I was thinking of, but we'll take this, slide it down onto the inside. And that is our Aperol Spritz. Can't wait to eat this orange later. So evidently, according to the back of the bottle, there is a certain color that we need to expect here. Did we get it? Do we get it? How's that looking? I can't see from your angle. Okay. Is a nice orange color. Yeah. That feels all right. I think we might have gotten it. That feels pretty good. I'm going to take a little picture for my own reference, too, to see how that actually looks compared. That looks pretty good. I mean, the lighting is not how it is on your guys' angle, but I will take it. Nice April spritz. Very nice. All right, let's pop this over. Finally, give this thing a try. I, again, have never had an Aperol spritz before. So this is as unbiased as I could try to possibly be for this sort of ranking that we're trying to do. Is this the drink of the summer now and forever? I have literally no idea, right? I wasn't missing anything. I'm gonna go back just to make sure that I wasn't missing absolutely anything. Slice an orange used as a garnish. That's it. Tips and tricks. Making a perfect Aperol spritz is as easy as 3, 2, 1. That's the ratio of Prosecco. Two parts Aperol, one part soda water. Aperol spritz is best served with ice in a wine glass. Garnish with a slice of orange in good company. Well, it seems that we have all of that here. All right. Now, note. I did not use Prosecco in this. I used champagne. But then again, I was using champagne the entire night so far. So I'd say that's a pretty good reference point. Mm. That's good. That's pretty nice. It's very forward on those kind of bitter orange notes, but not as I'm used to with a Campari. I'm very used to drinking Campari. I'm a big fan of a Negroni. I've never tried it with Aperol before, but so far, actually, how does, how does this thing taste on its own? I need to see what of those notes I'm getting from this. It's, it's orangey. It combines well with the champagne. It's bubbly. It's light. It's almost orange juicy. It's juicy. It's a juicy cocktail. It's almost like sipping almost orange juice. And now I wanna see how the Aperol tastes. Good What's night. up? Oh, good night, lovely. You were sitting there staring at me for a moment. Thank you, love. Oh, thank you, dear. Definitely sweeter than Campari is, but definitely getting those bitter notes as well. Just ever, ever, ever so slightly. It's pretty good. I'm trying to think though. Do I like it better than everything else? I don't know. I don't know so far. Man like me in this position has to have an opinion. So we're gonna go back through each of the drinks so far. Some of them have been sitting around for a little while. We're gonna take the top pick, picks them and I go right back through them. All the way from the beginning back to the end. Cause I wanna see of all these five different picks from various different locations. We've got recommendations coming in from bartenders apparently out there in the field. Wine enthusiasts. Uh, oh, women in home. That was who provided the one Hugo spritz recipe that I didn't have a proper reference for. We had wine enthusiasts. There was food and wine. We had other just opinions for the TikTokers of the internet suggesting what the proper cocktail for the summer is supposed to be. And on that list is, we'll go back at it from the top. Let me grab, let me grab my favorite Hugo spritz from over here. The one that I think I like the most. 
over here. So we, because this will be kind of the co the quasi cocktail roundup as we end things for the evening here. We started off with this combination. Apparently last year, what went viral was espresso and orange juice, and this year the natural next step of that is combining espresso and tonic water. My original notes was there was a nice bitterness from the espresso. I love coffee. It tasted really good. It paired super well with the sweetness that was coming from the tonic water while also boosting the bitterness from the coffee as well with the kind of quinine-y bitter chemical notes from the tonic water. In my opinion, this tasted really, really good. And there was a lovely component of orange there. It was very citrusy. Um, I put a little thing of, uh, I think, orange peel on this and somehow it was so citrusy. Even now, it's been sitting for a little while, there is a potent bitterness, but there is also a sweetness. It is kind of like the sweetness of a latte, but none of the smoothness with milk. And it maintains those bitter coffee notes, which personally, I love. But, oh, and we also add a little bit of gin in this afterwards, so I'm sipping it now, there's a bit of gin in there too. Those botanical, those bitter notes, not mostly chemical, there's also more of a botanical notes in there, and it's also a little more boozy. You can get a little bit of the from the alcohol there. Although, honestly, it just doesn't strike me as summer. This doesn't seem any more summer than every other coffee drink out there. There's nothing that really streams, screams summer to me about coffee, and there's nothing that Starbucks or any other branding agency, agency can do about it. Coffee to me is a year-round thing. I would say that this is even more winter months because I like the coffee that I'm used to is hot um, as opposed to be kind of cold and iced in this form. Aside from that, apparently also, according to, I believe it was Wine Enthusiast, let me double check on that reference over there, I keep forgetting, um, it was Wine Enthusiast, who apparently went out there to query bartenders who were actually out in the wild, it seemed that they went to a lot of the bars in New York City, the Brooklyn area, to ask them, what is going to be hot this summer, what's going to be the trendy thing this summer, and they apparently all said mezcal, so although I wasn't able to spin up the best mezcal cocktails from the best bars in New York and stuff, because of the various different types of ingredients and prep that you need to do, and my own personal philosophy that if you're going to do a summer cocktail, it should be simple and easily accessible. We went with a mezcal-based Paloma recipe called the Paloma Negra, which also used Mr. Black cold brew liqueur. That together, well, my original notes is that it's kind of watery. It's very diluted. It's like a diluted mezcal note with a bit of bitterness and sweetness that's kind of mellowed out from the grapefruit juice that we added, as well as the Mr. Black cold brew liqueur. Even now, there is a smokiness that is very, very prevalent, exactly from that mezcal, but it's tempered, and it's got a little bit of backbone from the bitter coffee notes in there, but it doesn't really strike, it doesn't really strike me as summer either. I probably wouldn't be, unless I was at a barbecue specifically, and I don't tend to do barbecues, I'm not a barbecue kind of guy for the most part in the summer, although that is a summer thing to do, this would be something that I would only sip in very specific scenarios. This doesn't really feel, when I think of summer, what I think of is relaxing by a pool, tropical nature. So this feels year round. This feels not my kind of summer, but it could be your kind of summer. The next thing we decided is, although the pina colada wasn't specifically recommended as one of the big summer things, when I think of tropical, to me, it's a pina colada. It's you blend things up together, you see what's on the inside with your uh, pineapple and your coconut base, and see what happens. This was a recipe that is supposedly an enhanced pina colada, specifically a sweet liberty pina colada, which specifically uses some coffee beans to add a different, slightly modified texture to the pina colada drink there. And we also floated sherry up on top of it to further modify the flavor profile of the pina colada to make it less so pineapple coconut and a little more fruit coconut, more so like raisiny or um, nutty notes there as well, which again kind of pairs well with the coconut aspect too. Coconut to me is a little almondy. This was more, I guess the nutty notes that I was getting from the sherry was a bit more walnut, but like the more savory component of a walnut, like a macadamia. Um, overall, I remember when I tasted it, the texture, it was, it was very smooth. Uh, I love tasting it with the sherry. I'll see how it tastes now. I think everything's kind of had a chance to mix up, so let me mix it up a little bit more. Oh, and the modification from the cocoa beans, there was a, a lovely texture that was imparted upon it. It was smooth, but it was also arid a little bit. A nice combo. Oh, and there was also pieces of pulp in that pina colada thing. This is a, even now, as it sat around a little bit longer, this is a very, this is a very good pina colada recipe. I love the way that the sherry coalesces with everything else. 
and I love the way that this tastes. To me, this is very summery to me because of what my preferences for summer are. And that's very beachy. It's very down south. It's very tropical. I like that. It was not garnished very well. And there was probably some better play to be had with the density of the ice and stuff. And so in that way, it's less simple than the other cocktails are. So is that really, it's it's more it's more the high end idea what summer is. You put a little bit more effort into it. You get a little bit more skill in there. Have somebody else do it for you. You, you, you wait on me as my bartender. You do the work and then I enjoy my finely made pina colada. And apparently it's this recipe. And I like that very much. The other one, the next one, was this, this idea of an elderflower spritz. Apparently what's popped up in multiple locations recommended from multiple different magazines and other TikTokers of the internet is this, this Hugo or elderflower or Saint Germain or Saint Elder spritz that apparently has a rather nebulous recipe. There's no, I mean, naturally, there's no one way to make any particular cocktail out there, much to the dismay of some very, very opinionated people out there. But there were three different ways that we tried making a Hugo elderflower spritz in this case. One included um, no mint, but elderflower and champagne or Prosecco and soda water with garnishes including celery and cucumber. Um, that's the one that I have here, which was the best out of the three that I had over here. The next one we had had some lemon juice in there and I don't believe had any of the club soda either. It was just the champagne notes or let me make sure that I'm quoting that correctly. It was more on the sour side, not huge on the sour stuff for me, but that could be somebody's go-to as it pertains to the summertime. It depends on what summer means to you. That one had lemon juice and it had the champagne in it, but it had no club soda. So I was right on that. The last one, the last iteration of it actually used gin. It had no, um, it did have the soda water. It did have the Prosecco. It had the elderflower in it. There was mint added and it specifically had gin in that as well. They did not have any of the lemon juice, so it wasn't very sour, but it was a little more boozy. Definitely more palatable on the mint, but it was very, very heavy on the champagne. Most of that cocktail over here is you put a little bit of elderflower, a little bit of gin, a little bit of soda water, and just fill the whole thing up with champagne, which again, could be the preference for some people if I wanted a mimosa in this case, but mimosas don't really seem super summery to me either. It's not as spritzy. It needs a little bit more dilution. So I went with the first recipe that didn't utilize the mint with the um, with the elderflower, the sparkling wine, the champagne, and the soda water together. I would put mint in this. I don't know if I would garnish it with celery or cucumber. Although it does have a really nice bubbly effect to it, which I think I'm gonna include in my pictures later. I'll take a little picture of it right now because it is, it is very, very, very bubbly. Nice high-res macro image there. And then finally, after that, uh, I guess actually going back to that for a second, it was it was spritzy. It was nice. It was very flowery. It was very botanical. It was very spritzy. It felt very summery. It felt very much flowers open, air clean, nose <sighs> smelling good things. And for that reason, but it also feels kind of springy in that way because I associate spring with flowers and stuff. So this feels a little more spring, but spring springs into summer. And so in that way, it is very springy. And then finally, the tried and true classic of the Aperol Spritz. It's apparently like the go-to for most summers, uh, but apparently people just want to be, people want 2023 to be special because that's where we're living in the now. Does the Aperol Spritz compare to the other ones that are apparently the up and coming ones? Does it maintain its title as a really good or perhaps the best summer cocktail? I would say that in between all of these, I wouldn't go with the espresso tonic. I wouldn't go with a mezcal based thing either, unless you took a mezcal and made a mez took mezcal and made a spritz out of it. But those smoky notes that I'm getting from at least a Del Maguey Vita mezcal just doesn't seem to match up very well with my impression of summer, unless you take into account that Canada's on fire. I've said that way too many times now. I will not be repeating it. But between that. I have a personal preference towards the pina colada. Love pina coladas. This is the best pina colada recipe that I've had. It needs tweaking, but I love the flavor components there from the sherry. The elderflower spritz is lovely. It's botanical. And if mixed in the right way as well, it would probably be up there. It would also need to be a lot colder. This was not as cold as it probably should have been. I definitely need more ice in there. Need more liquid in there. But it's so clean. It's so air. I like that. And then the Aperol spritz, honestly, I need another taste of that because Oh, but you know, oh, that is so juicy. It's so nice and juicy. Oh, this brings up a very particular memory. 
This was a memory of walking on the beach. Well, I think we were, it wasn't down with my family. We were down with my fiance's family. And I walked up the beach to a sandbar and I got, grabbed myself a drink. And I don't even remember what it was. I think it was just a house cocktail thing. And I remember sipping on that flavor, very specific flavor. It must've been some sort of Aperol spritz thing as I walked back and met up with the rest of the family after kind of walking off on my own. It was a kind of nebulous little journey I went on. That is super pleasant. It's got a really good balance of sweetness. And now I want to go back and forth between these two spritzes here. I want to say it's one of these spritzes because just so it's so refreshing. It's so chilling. It's bubbly. It's pleasant. It reminds me of not necessarily the, I guess, the lounging aspect or the tropical aspect, which is more towards my biases. If it was my pick, I'd be having pina coladas. Be specialty, well-made pina coladas. But if I was trying to pick something that I would recommend to other people, so floral and it's so it's so vegetal it's like it's like a well-made garden salad this feels very salady to me the elderflower spritz and then between that and the aperol spritz mm, it's got that slight bitter component but it also kind of tastes like orange juice oh my god this is tough because this is my first inclination toward the aperol spritz i love the way that tastes i love bitter campari as well so this is like right up my alley as well. A lot of these things I really much like. I like mezcal, I like espresso, I love pina coladas. I'm a fan of elderflower, but haven't really found the best way to play around with it. And I also love Campari or other bitter, bitter liqueurs. If I had to pick a single cocktail from the ones that we had this evening that I would genuinely want to share with my friends and my family for my vacation, I would, I would have to go with the Aperol Spritz. I'd have to. I, I have to on this one. This is actually kind of I'm, I'm really I'm shocking myself here because I was I was really hoping that something else would kind of pop up and take over from the other one, something new and exciting. And the other flower is so compelling. There is so much that you have there, but it just doesn't have that same familiarity with what I already associate with summer. There is a whole backlog of memories that I have with sweet things during the summer, with my vacation with my family and the fruit bowls that they'd set up down by the pool and stuff that just reminds me of a brisk summer breeze through the beach it's like there's even something the dry aspect of it reminds me of kind of like there's more bitter moments at the beach and stuff where you got a little bit of sand in your pants you know you're waiting out in the water there's almost when i think about salt water there's almost a savory almost almost a savory component that i'm getting from the aperol spritz at least the way that i mixed it here which was aperol's website uh there was their recipe on there that i just i really like and the other piece of it too throughout all of this I really like the aftertaste that this imparts. It is sweet, it's inviting, it's refreshing, and it lays clean. And it allows me to kind of, it reminds me of something that I can pick up, sip, and put down. It's very much that aspect of, it very much pushes forward that idea of lounging and relaxing, because it's something that you can pick up and put down, walk away, jump in the pool, come back to, and it's still gonna be good. The spritz, the other spritz on the other hand, it's just a little, it feels more spring-like to me because those are the more floral notes. But if there had to be a spritz for the summer, if I had to pick between these two, and there are so, I a caveat here, there's so many other spritzes and stuff out there. There's probably a millions of other cocktail recipes out there that could possibly evoke the feeling of summer. And it depends on your local area, depends on your, your you know, the people that you surround yourself in, what you plan on doing. But I mean, if I had to pick it, I think if I had to pick a cocktail to sit by the pool for my family vacation with my folks, I'd have to go with the Aperol Spritz, mostly because, I don't know, it, it appeals to, I mean, it appeals to me in a way that is very familiar, and it's very inviting, and it feels like something that doesn't require a lot of commitment to, which feels ironic and a little hypocritical coming from me, but I like that very much. I like it very much, indeed. And that's my closing thoughts on that. That's all I've got. I decided this evening to go through the various different recommendations for what cocktail you should be drinking this summer. We covered an espresso tonic, apparently a viral thing, a mezcal drink called the Paloma Negra, which was pretty good. Mezcal's great. We also had a modified pina colada recipe. We had a Hugo slash Elder for our spritz, and then we compared that to an Aperol spritz, a classic summer cocktail. Evidently, for me, from the perspective of somebody who's never had an Aperol spritz before, made in his own bar, in his own personal and comfy space, I have to go with an Aperol spritz. Evidently, that that sticks up to it. I've seen it recommended in various different answers, and I love it. 
The real answer to the drink of the summer is water. Excellent point in there, Larix. If you had to drink anything to keep yourself hydrated with the sun shining high, it is supposedly going to be, at least according to one tabloid, the hottest summer of ever. So I believe you all with that. Stay, stay hydrated and stuff and keep yourself well, no matter what you're sipping on, no matter where you happen to be enjoying your summer at, whether your summer is happening now, a couple months from now, or if it's going to happen six months from now because you're on the other side of the world than I am, I'm curious as to what you're drinking for the summer. This, I, I feel like there's a lot more out there, so many more options. There was only five that I wound up finding, but there's hundreds, thousands and stuff like that out there. And I look forward to seeing if you have anything to share so we can bring it all back next year to find another summer cocktail for the year. 2024. I look forward to that time. Larixus, thanks for the stream. Thank you so much for everybody who popped along until the bitter end. Bitter because of the Aperol, naturally, but it's also sweet too. Significantly more sweet than Campari, as everyone has told me, and now I finally learned. It's great, and that's what I will be sipping on this evening. To everybody out there, no matter where you are or who you are, may you have a wonderful rest of your night. Or if the sun is shining, may you have a wonderful rest of your morning. If you are currently enjoying the lavish luxury that is vacation in the way that you so choose, perhaps you have a drink in your hand, feel free to share it with us. Or just keep it to yourself and keep that as your own little secret that you'll take on with you until the next relaxing time will hit you. No matter where you all are, I hope you keep well, and I thank you all for joining me again at the bar with the next. We will be back again next week with something more or less completely different, and I look forward to. To everybody, thanks again. Until next time, y'all. Bye!